Hey booze, in this video, I give commentary based on my opinion. Nothing is to be taken as factual. We are just here to have conversation. We don't expose and we don't sip tea on this channel. I'm giving you real talk straight, no chaser. Let's see if you can handle it. Cause I'm a boss. I haven't done anything for you to be proud of. Of course you have. You are marrying a man who can support you. Okay, so let's get into it. Um, I really think it was my internet, honestly. I learned a lot about technology within the last few days, to be honest. Well, week, to be honest. So we will see. But I really think the issue was my internet. I mean, if you don't know much about technology and all the inner works and outer works of technology and things like that, but then the number one thing that's causing the issue is your internet, but you're thinking that it's other things. It just takes time for you to get to that realization or that resolution. So I think I found the issue. So let's go ahead and get into this video. Um, I'm not here to further expose Melanie King at all. Um, I'm not here for people being doxxed. I think that's extreme. Um, in the intro, as you can see, it says we don't expose, right? Um, but at the same time, I can't control what other people are doing. This live stream is about Melanie King saying things about black women. Um, the way she talked to that one girl from the UK with the blue hair. That's what it is for me. I don't care anything about her personal life, her personal business, even though I do think her personal life, her personal business is contradicting the things that she preaches which is why a lot of people have an issue with her because she comes across holier than thou. She comes across as if she looks down on others and it seems like she is the very thing that she speaks out against. That is just my opinion. I think a lot of people have that opinion about her if you take a look at some of her content. So before we can go forward, I gotta go back. So before I can update you on what's going on, today or within the last few hours, I have to go back. So then you can get an understanding of why people are reacting in the way that they are, why people feel the need to dox her, why people feel the need to know more about, about her personal life and her personal business. Honestly, she put this energy out here. This is the second person I've had on my YouTube channel um, who put the energy out. And now that they're getting it in return, they are the victim which I find that to be hard to believe because when you put certain energy out, it has the ability to come back to you and it has the ability to hurt you, your family, or your loved ones. This is why you should think twice before you get on a platform and you shame and blame people as if you have uh, made all the right decisions in your life, you're perfect, um, you haven't done anything wrong, et cetera, et cetera. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Because this is why a lot of women, particularly Black women, have an issue with Melanie King and her recent behavior that she has displayed out of her words for fun. Yeah, I will say across the board, Black women are the lowest um, in terms of dating and marrying. In fact, actually, Black women are high in dating because we give up sex the most. We're for the streets. We're twerking. We're doing all types, we're doing the most. We dominate rap in the culture that is very sexual, especially in the US. So a lot of men see us as easy targets to, you know, to have sex with. And we, we have the highest rate of um, having children outside of uh, marriage, wedlock. And so men see us as bedwenches, easy to, to have sex with, but they don't see us as valuable wives. Our culture, especially in the US, I don't know how it is in the UK, I know it's a little different, but we, we our family structure is so broken and so uh, destroyed that we we really, the majority of black women in the U.S., um, we've been put into a position of just being, you know, sexual, uh, just for a man's sexual pleasure. 
But if they're going to take a woman serious, that's why you see a lot of black men when they become successful, they're not marrying us. I mean, it, it, they do. Okay, let me say this. 80% of black men are marrying black women, even when they're successful. But there is a huge thing where a lot of black men are going to other races. Why? And a lot of women don't understand. They say the man is racist. No, the culture that that woman may have been brought up in, her submissiveness, you know, in our, our culture, we're being rebellious, you know, dressing provocative. It's standard. It is standard. We hate ourselves a lot. We hate our own hair. Um, we, we want our, our butts to be the fast, the fattest. We, we pride ourselves on things of being bosses, having the fattest booty, you know, being able to twerk the best, but not intrinsic values. That is a wife. Um, and to speak to Maggie, like we talk about like, like colorism in our culture, um, because I, I think race is not just race, but it's colorism within our own culture where they prefer light skin. They prefer this, that, and the other. I tell you on God, an attitude like Maggie, a lot of men, like regardless of anything, like you know, to me, there's such a peace and an aura about her that a lot of women can learn from of every race, but particularly in the black community, we don't, that's not standard model, like who she is. Like if you come around Maggie, you just feel loved on, you feel like home. And so I think a lot of black women can, can retain that. But if we're talking about race, we're talking about black women. Let's just be honest about it. We're, we're talking about black women, not, we have the lowest marriage rates. We have the highest birth rates outside of marriage. Why is that? We have the highest number of abortions and our behavior and the culture we promote. If you look around the world, look at our rappers, look at the culture. Most men see us as sexual tools. Do you, do you, do you agree with what she was saying? Yeah, I do. Do you agree with what 100%. she's saying? Yeah. Do you agree with what she's saying? Partly, but not everything. Okay, do you agree with what she's saying? I do. What was the partly? What's the part that you don't agree with? I think one that, I don't know all those statistics, but I'm assuming you're talking from the US. You know, when you talk about wife culture and wife mindset, Maggie's a wife in, in, in this room. But, I'm thinking but about... she's rare. She's rare. Her attitude and what she is in the in the world, the U.S. has the highest numbers of children born out of wedlock, and the people who dominate that are black women. So this is worldwide. So worldwide, and single mother black rate is, single mother single rate is mother, black women. The single mother rate is black women. In the U.K. as well. But okay. it's black women who yes, dominate that. So women. you're saying that we're not what based with this wife mindset? No, we're not. We're not. We're not. And we can. Now I have to be honest with you guys. I don't totally disagree with her, but to single us out. And Miss Pearly Things uh, apartment among her production team and everything like that. That's what a lot of people don't like. Because um, I grew up predominantly around white people. White people are not perfect. So it goes back to whitewashing, creating the standard that we should live up to what white people are doing. But that's the thing. We are. We're here in America. We're part of the culture. We're African Americans, right? So that means we share culture that's similar to white people. We share spaces with them. So not only that, they listen to our music. We listen to their music. We tend to pick up on some of their Western ways. So in my opinion, she's not 100% wrong. But to single us out as if it's just us, that is so far from the truth. So far. But I want to come in and bring in this video because this video sums it up for me and men don't listen to women so i'm going to bring on a man to sum it up for me because he did such a great job and he really he pretty much reminds me of my father personally uh let me see here it is to bring it to every man's attention that our sisters didn't become bitches till you became a dog. Mm. So I ask you to just make up your mind to be a king just for shits and giggles. Okay? Make up your own mind to just stand up and be a king. And I guarantee you, our sisters will stand beside you. I and ask question. How do you. So back to what I'm saying. <clears throat> a lot of times black women tend to just be blamed. But when I think of a community, it takes two people. It takes a man and a woman to create a community. It takes raising children to create a community. And so when we have these conversations and it's just the center focus is women, black women, 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 women. The community just didn't get that way just because of women. It takes two. And then I'm, I'm going to give you this to think about. The black community is toxic and dysfunctional because of family. Family. It's not just black women, family. 
So until we address that, I really am tired of these conversations about black women, black women, black women. Black women are the scapegoat when it comes to just about anything. We are the scapegoat. We are the, we are the scapegoat within society as a whole. People always turn to us for everything, whether it's positive, negative, and in between. We are the scapegoat. Nothing we do is good enough. Nothing we say is ever uh, thought provoking for many. We are undermined a lot. We are gaslit a lot. So we are the scapegoat of society here in the U.S. We just are. People pick on us. We don't even have to. We could be minding our business and it's a problem. So when we speak on the black community, that's unity, community, unity, man, woman, children, family, village. What happened to it? It's gone. So until people want to be 100% honest about it and include all factors into the equation, I'm tired of these conversations. I, I just am. So it takes, it takes two to create a community, a man and a woman, period. Nothing else to talk about. So to continue to blame women, women as if these women, these girls are not someone's daughter is very odd to me. It just does not make sense. Yet men are supposed to be leaders. They are supposed to teach. They are supposed to guide. They are supposed to influence. What happened to that? What happened to that? So let's really talk about it. But of course, it's just the black woman's fault, as always. Like, there's a lot of reasons for it. It's not just because we just are we're the worst or anything like that. It's not what I, think, I mean. But I think that's what you have to break down. Because if we're going to then speak to black women and say these things, you have to then come with one reasonings because there's so much we already get that you are this you are this you are that if we're they're going to add to that ourselves you have to be responsible to add a solution and the background but the solution is you have to take accountability i don't care what your background is there we live in the most privileged society in the world even though the worst circumstance of a black woman today is nothing but it was 100 years ago especially if you want to talk about the u.s slavery i don't know how it was in the uk i mean i do know it wasn't like it was in the u.s but if one woman black woman made a choice that was maggie made a choice that was better than the next black woman then you have a standard now that you need to live up to and i think a lot of times we wanted to say well it's somebody's fault to the government is this that a lot of races you look at the jewish people and what they've gone through in in society it's it's a lot of the same atrocities in fact all of the bible all of the israelites and the hebrews were actual slaves like it was it was a known thing mm -hmm. and so what i'm saying is if we kind of we have to take accountability we want to keep pointing let's not point any more of what the government and what it is what do black women need to change today what are we promoting are you twerking are your friends twerking online are they showing their booty are they dressing for the streets are they thinking about serving a man most black women today it is it is it is sacrilegious it is almost insulting them to say serve a man a plate it is like it's, it's like discombobulate them it's almost they get aggressive and mad and call you a pick me for giving a man a plate taking his plate you want some more to drink you want some more to eat it, it's a pleasure Maggie and I were having a conversation like you most black women don't know the joy and I'm not blaming get what I'm saying mm -hmm. I'm saying this from a point of view that you don't a lot of black women don't know the other side of this this conversation we we're talking about it is a joy to see a man light up like what's for dinner like excited about bringing the plate and he's so satisfied you think you have to be sexual to make a man so happy and want you I'm gonna tell you what we come in and I'm serving your man, I'm taking him. Like he's gone, he's out of your life. Why? Because I'm coming in with white features. I'm, I don't have to dress a certain way. I don't have to do certain, I don't have to twerk. We, we have been sexualized. And what you have to understand, the way we are behaving today in our mindsets, we wanna blame the government, but you have to understand the mindsets we have today, the independent sexualized ways that we are, you ought to be mad that that's how you have to be, what we our culture has become because it has been put upon us. Okay, so for me, my perception, I do agree with a lot of what you're saying, but for me, it comes from a place of, let's talk about self-worth and let's talk about how black girls and black women can increase our self-worth and therefore you're coming from a place of help because if you're talking about other cultures, the Jewish culture, any other cultures, they are a community and they don't, I feel like it's only our culture that constantly talks bad about each other so yes, publicly. It's true. It's I personally feel like the black community has a sex addiction issue both men and women, the community in itself is hypersexual, which is why a lot of things tend to happen within our family dynamics. Like molestation runs pretty deep in the black family, which is why a lot of us don't gather. But to say it's women, to say it's women, 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 we have to have sex with someone. We can't have sex with ourselves. We could have sex with each other, but we're not doing that, right? Because then the out of wedlock numbers wouldn't make sense. So I think the black community has a sex addiction, a hyper, like every day I get on social media, it's the shade room, it's spiritual word, it's baller alert. 
we're always having a sexual undertone conversation on platforms. Always. Every week. I've started noticing that a lot more. It's like sticking out to me now. And so it's not just women. It's not. It's men too. Being hypersexual. So I think it's a community issue that runs really deep in the black in the black family. And we can start with the history of the black family, right? How we were exploited during slavery, both men and women. We weren't the only ones being art in slavery. Men were being art as well. So I think that's where it starts. I think a lot of black people have an unhealthy obsession with sex. It's not just women though. I'm sorry. Like, I, I noticed that. We're like the only community that constantly talks about sex day in and day out. And we don't get tired of it. We talk about it all the time. We love it. So I think we need to start having a real conversation about that instead of making it just the woman's issue. It's a community issue. There are kids nowadays having sex at 10, 12, 11, uh, 11 13, just young. Just, just super young. And it's because they're being exposed to our culture, right? Ours, because we're a community, our culture. And then all of a sudden they are growing this obsession about sex, getting sexual, porn, and all of this stuff. It's a community issue. It's not just the black woman. So we need to be real about that. We need to be real about that. Um, men think it's a, it's a badge of honor to be fetishized by women outside of the community when it comes to their peen. Is that not right? Okay. So that translates over to our community as well and how people outside of our community view us. So I think we have an issue with sex in general as a whole when we speak on the community. And like the old wise man said, he said, women did not become bees until men made the, or no, men were dogs and men became, women became bees. So men became dogs, women became bees. And I keep telling men, women only follow in your footsteps. I keep telling y'all that. They, a lot of, there are a lot of women nowadays called 304s who I consider them to be playgirls. They're being players, just like how men are. Men are players. So now you have 304s that are players. Y'all two of the same. Just two different sides of the same coin. And it's like calling someone out, but it's like, that's what you do. That's what you preach on your platform. You teach men to be players. You teach them to pump and dump, right? You teach them to move on and not to do this, to do this. Okay, cool. Well, now you have 304s. They are on the rise. Why are they on the rise? They're mimicking your behavior. Now they're, they're wanting to get a lick back. They wanted to get their lick back. So they're becoming players. So I don't know. It's kind of hard to take um, men in this space serious when you teach men to be players and now women are doing the same thing. They're literally doing the same thing. And you know what they're doing? They're taking a page out of your book. They're sitting back. They're studying your platform. They're studying your content. They're studying how to easily manipulate a man. And it really just doesn't take much. So it's not hard. It's true. So publicly, it's true. So if we're going to have this conversation, you come from a place of how can we help each other and build each other up? Maggie um, kindly then spoke to this lady and said, can I just say, out of respect, next time, think like this. Next time, put the right things in order. And I think that was the most beneficial thing that she got from this conversation rather than all the questions of how did this happen? How did this happen? Da, 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 and being accusatory. Come from a place that Maggie was saying, how do we help each other with building up our self-worth? and kindness and stop with the constant well with this with this with this with this with this because we are talking bad about ourselves but this is the thing black women want this soft tone but we don't give what we want to receive so we but were talking about but maggie did but look at most black women today there's an aggression there's a, a dominance there is a thing and i understand because most of us have been raised very masculine because we didn't have fathers in the home our mothers relied on us our mothers didn't teach us certain things i, I don't agree with that I, I don't agree with that i was raised very militant and very masculine by my father so that's not true a lot of black women are raised masculine because we have to survive in a system that was never made for us. And until people want to address that, stop gaslighting black women on why we were raised masculine. It wasn't because of single mothers. 
Some of us had fathers raising us to be hyper independent. Why? Because we live in a system. We come from a community where we can't rely on our men. My own father prepared me for that. That's number one. Number two, we live in a system that was never made for us. So if we're being raised masculine, it's because of the conditioning in the environment that we're in. Again, gaslighting black women on why we are the way that we are. So, of course, these other women, they can go around being feminine all day, every day. They don't have to worry about being black. They don't have to worry about being black, seen as being aggressive because you're black. It doesn't matter if you're female. We're automatically seen as the aggressor because we're black. Don't black men know what that's like? Come on. Let's be real about it. So we want what we're not giving out to the world. You want the tone of Maggie, then be Maggie. Like no one's making us choose the things. Everyone comes from somewhere. My mother was raped at 14. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But no fault of her own. Her black mm -hmm. mother kicked her out of her house. Mm -hmm. White nuns took her in. Mm -hmm. Okay. No fault of her own. She made a choice. She didn't talk to her family for nearly seven years. She decided to go to college. She was going to make something herself. She decided, she she went on, joined the Air Force, went to college, got her degree. The only person in her family, while the rest of them made different choices. Then she went on. I, I grew up in the Pentagon because of my mother. I had an internship in the White House because of my mother. Her circumstances were what they were, but she went on to make a different choice. Mm -hmm. So every time we say th these things, and then she raised me the way she did to try to get me the results. Doesn't mean I'm perfect. She's not perfect. None of us are perfect. But I think a lot of black women, especially Kevin Samuels, who was my mentor, a lot of black women are against him. He was one of my friends. He was my mentor. And so a lot of women got mad at his tone because they never had a father talk to them in discipline. He says, he said, I'm just like my father. So I was like home to me because I, I, I knew a man who loves you and love black women. And that's what it was. That's what we were so harping on tone. And we, we want all this kindness, but are we giving it out? Most black women are extremely aggressive. I want to stop her right there because she said, oh, my father would talk to me in the same way. Same thing. But I knew my father loved me though. You have strangers, men, strangers, okay, talking to women in that way. You really think that's love? I can't tell. That's why I don't listen to men outside of my father. It could be hate. It could be jealousy. It could be abuse. It could be a lot of different things. And even at times when I was growing up and my father would talk to me in that same way that you're referring to, I had to question like, damn, does this man actually love me or does he not? I couldn't tell some days. So for men who don't pay bills, because my daddy paid my bills. He provided for me. These men ain't paying bills. These women ain't paying. These men are not paying these women's bills to even have that type of authority over her. So it doesn't even make sense. My dad provided for me. He guided me. He influenced me. He taught. He showed up for me consistently every day. These men are in no position to have that type of authority over these women. It's very weird. It's, it's, it's very weird. That is, there's, there's a huge difference. She wants us to allow any man out here to have authority over us. And what world does she live in? That's just not smart. That's not street smart at all. To allow a man access up here, that's a dangerous game that you're playing. That's why they need, men need women. I would say toxic men need women to be delusional, stupid, naive, and gullible. Stupid, naive, delusional, and gullible. It's a dangerous game to allow a man in here. Especially when you don't know him, you don't know his motives, his hidden intentions. It doesn't make sense. It's dangerous. So it's different when it comes from your father. It's different because even if your father talks to you like that, if he's providing for you, he's showing up for you consistently. And some of these girls out here, their father never showed up for them consistently, provided for them consistently. Do you think that they would even listen to their father? No, no. Respect is earned. It's not just given away. So you actually have to lead by example to get that type of respect or to get that authoritative role over someone. These men are not leading by example. They're doing the complete opposite, which is why we have 304s on the up and coming players. 304s are players, women who play games, women who waste your time. They're following the lead of these men. So which is it? Which is it? 
extremely combative, aggressive. But when they say, well, well you need to say it nicer. But are we giving out what we want to receive? So like, that's where it helps, yeah. though. If you give it, maybe it will be received and it might just be soaked in and given right back. And I don't say this to, to put our women down. I know the history of what we've gone through. This is more so we can have a conversation, be real with each other so that we as a community can get better results. If we're not real with each other, especially the older women talking to younger women, I want every woman in this room to win. I have no competition with you. A lot of our mothers, a lot of your mothers are in competition with you. Okay. Mm -hmm. They don't want you to win. They didn't raise you to be a wife because they didn't understand. They did the best of what they knew. And so it's not a point of putting you down. It's not a point of breaking you down, but saying, listen, we need to learn from Jewish culture. We need to learn some Latin so what, culture. I got a question. So are we all, so, so we all want to be more like Meghan Markle or less like No, absolutely not. She's a narcissist. <laughs> I, I was a, troll, a fan. My question. first time coming yeah. to the UK was to that wedding because I believed in what they were doing. Yeah. I recently did a video as the first black woman publicly on YouTube to say absolutely once I saw the evidence of the simping of Prince Harry and the destruction of his family. Boy, but listen, listen, Ruby Bridges, who was the first little girl in the US to go into segregation in the US, all the schools were segregated, black and white. She was seven years old, went into a school for the first time, a white school. She was spit on, beat up brutalized and she stood what we call 10 toes she stood taller than Meghan markle you do not know uh, you know if you look at martin luther king people who went through real racism in the world nelson mandela complained less than Meghan markle she was only black when it was convenient she never stood for us why were there no black girlfriends and her black family was she had beef with her white family why was her black family not there the only black people were there were were, were uh people that she saw black people as charity or black people like oprah people she didn't even know so she didn't love us she didn't claim us she did nothing for us and once i opened my eyes and see she got the right one with prince harry being a mark and a simp and he had a bitterness and an anger because he's not the he's the spare but really y'all y'all need to watch south park I just, i'm glad my troll <laughs> question went on that direction can i add like one little no no no, no? no, 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 no. okay yeah, 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 yeah. sorry guys sorry sorry, sorry. i'm gone i'm gone all right cool many of you know i was just banned on tiktok and we are demonetized on a daily basis on this platform if you want to help okay <clears throat> so a lot of what melanie had to say in this video is a lot it has to do with a lot of why she's getting exposed um which i don't agree with y'all know i don't agree with that type of stuff you know spe especially when it comes to people's kids i just feel like something should be off limits kids they should be off limits they're innocent this is adult stuff like it, sh it should not involve children but her situation is a little unique i will say that because it's a it's about youtube it's about her being a, a grifter a chameleon all these things and so it has a lot to do with unfortunately her children because she put her children out here before she made that switch to do i i would say manosphere content even though a lot of people are running away from the manosphere label due to them being investigated by the FBI. But I'm going to move on because I do want to move on to the next thing. Another reason Melanie is having such a hard week. I want to say, oh, this one. Um, she is also seen as a colorist. A lot of people believe that she is a colorist. She does. She definitely shows signs that she is a colorist. Okay. And I'm going to show you this video as well, because her and I want to say MTR and Melanie King set up on live the other night and made fun of this African woman. So let me just go ahead and play this video and then I'll be back. What up, what up, what up, y'all? It's your boy, Healthy Black Pill Diet 2. And if you are not subscribed to this channel, you are definitely missing out. Hashtag, what the f is your life about? All right. So apparently Mel Melanie King and MTR did another stream together last night. And oh my God. They literally were clowning African women's feet. They were clowning dark-skinned black women's feet. How dare these light-skinned people, these colorist mofos, talk about our people from the motherland? Crazy, crazy, crazy. Shame, shame, shame. Let's play this footage, man. I'm gonna get my commentary. Uh, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Let's go. Fair use. So let me provide some context real quick. Um, they're reacting to a video of the Pan African dating show, which is produced by O'Shea. And the guy who's featured on the show is J.R. Wisdom, another waffle colored Negro. And basically, you know, he's trying to find a woman out there in Uganda, and basically he's looking at their feet. Interesting stuff. Let's proceed. Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Hold up, hold up. Holy! She's she been in a... Holy! Where, 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 they're, they're in a... 
Uganda, right? They're actually cute. It's just the angle. I think her toes are cute. It's just the angle. Do they have shoes in Uganda? Oh, you what you're not going to do? What you? Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, never mind. My bad, y'all. I'm looking at something. <laughs> All right, so uh, he just asked, do they have shoes in Uganda? Do they have shoes in Uganda? What kind of crap is that? Asking if they got shoes in Uganda. Of course they got shoes in Uganda, Negro. What are you talking about, NTR? You sound like a colorist nationalist, NTR. I'm not going to do is put my, my average, like, like, we are not going to. I think I'm like... Like five percent Ugandan. You ain't gonna put my people. Down. Oh shit! Her toes are cute. It's just the angle is hitting, and they no. fresh out the shoe. She got the knuckle dust. Her shoes are busted, though. I ain't gonna lie. I mean, her feet are busted, man. I, I, ain't, I cannot cap. Jesus Christ. There's no sir. I don't like them. Her feet look like hands. <laughs> <laughs> that, oh god. Nigga, why, why the knuckles are so pronounced? Because Ooh. she has brown skin, and sometimes when you are. Oh hell no! Ah. You light skin. You don't understand. Sometimes the knuckle, the elbows, the knees, our joints, uh, it, it's a different color. No. I'm sorry you've been introduced to black no. folk for the first time. No, I don't like what how. What you're not gonna do is put down my you got it people. I don't That's like how the do. I don't like how the middle finger toe is. Um, she look good. Her pedicure is cute. Y'all crazy? No, I'm up. calling her. Her pedicure is cute. Get the, the lighting. The lighting is off. Lies. Her toes are her toes are cute. Those are some strong. Nah, I ain't gonna. Her toes do look kind of weird. <laughs> good lord. NTR pretty much roasted the hell out of this woman's feet, man. I don't know MTR is that funny, man. Let's proceed. Ass feet, girl. Well, you know what? I'm sick of this. I don't, I don't, I don't. That, you see this knuckle right here? That nigga's sturdy as a motherfucker. I don't, <laughs> I don't trust her. She's a scammer. She's got scammer toes. You know, I probably should have put a trigger warning in here because I know a lot of, I have a lot of African followers and I do apologize for the immaturity and disrespect that you're seeing right now. But we're not all like this. Unfortunately, some people are just more ignorant when it comes to stuff like this. So I don't know why they thought that this was a good idea. I, I don't know why they thought this was a good idea. But this is what black people do to each other. This is this is what we do. And then we sit back and we blame black women. This, this is what we do. And we think this is entertaining. It's actually very embarrassing because this is what we consider uh, racist or su white supremacy people to do to us. But we turn around and we do it to each other. Very ignorant. But let's continue. She's got. <laughs> she's... Uh oh. Uh oh. Damn. She's walked around barefoot most of her life. Oh. Okay, Come on, MTR. So he make he making fun of these underprivileged, underserved, poor, destitute women. How dare you, MTR? You sitting up there in your penthouse, you know, with your light skinned shorty next to you, and you making fun of the the, the dark skinned people who got a. We gotta struggle. Come on, MTR. This ain't cool, bro. Ugandan. What are those? <laughs> she got the 2023 uh, Jordan Ugandan ones. Oh, on her. Oh, she, she got... oh, 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 this is a violation of the highest order. This oh, is a violation. I don't like how. Is this is this a normal you activity on the side right here? Right you're too picky. Do you eliminate girls like this? She, she said you're not into feet. Do you eliminate them? She... I bet if she was a white woman, he wouldn't be saying that. I bet if that was Pearl's feet, he wouldn't be saying that shit. But he gonna say it to the dark skinned Ugandan black woman. What is wrong, MTR? This dude is a colorist. Yes, MTR is a colorist. MTR hates dark skinned women. MTR doesn't like black women. That's the reason he came at six to goddess, because she dark skinned. He don't like the dark skinned sisters. That's why he's standing next to Melanie King because she light skinned. He only likes the light skinned skinned women. Come on, MTR. You got biker toes. <laughs> what are biker toes? You, you know, like when they ride the motorcycles and they stop, like and they stop with their feet. She got the Flintstones. Yeah, what's she, she got the, she got the, what, what, the, the Fred Flintstones. She got the. <laughs> she's getting eliminated with those, mama. She needs a lifetime membership to Manicures United. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna give her. You know what I'm saying? Let's go start a go GoFundMe. You know what I mean? I just don't like the discoloration between her toes and then like the, the parts of her toes where the ligaments are. No, I'm sorry. That is how black people are. That's how black skin. I know. No. You don't know about. Are you that. telling me these are pretty toes? I don't think her toes are cute. You're a goddamn liar. Uh. Why you? Black people, even me, if black people have different. Let colors. me see your toes. Okay. Oh, you got them niggas. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah. My, my toes are a little shiny. I look bad. This is so crazy. It's so crazy because she's talking about like discoloration. It's just I the irony in this. Her getting uh, her skin bleached or whatever. Like, Melody King was literally three shades darker than this before she got her skin bleached. So, of course, there's going to be some discoloration on her feet. You know? Just saying. I told you like this, motherfucker. What the? Okay. Why, why, were, they, why were they doing this? Because I was pressing them onto the ground because I, like I was angry at you. No, you, you. Wait a minute. So, you angry at, at me for talking about her toes? We're going to. I look bad. My toes. You're going to put your toes on? We're going to. Oh, shit. Oh, I'm going to latch you here. Okay, never mind. Oh, Lord Jesus. Okay. We're back to church. Let's get back to church. Those are pretty toes. Let's get back to church. 
Toes is pretty toes. No, but what you have? Like I said, her toes do look jacked up. They do look jacked up. It's not really the color so much. It's just the the, 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 the shape, the shapes, and just the way they look. Like, ugh. They're like animal feet. Put them lower. Talk about the discoloration, okay? It's not discoloration. Black people, it, it's just the melting how it shows up, okay? What you're not going to do? No, you remember the movie Happy Feet? She got, she, she got, no, she got the angry feet. Damn. You're not gonna do my sister like this. Yo, God. You're not gonna do my sister like this. No. Listen, no. I never knew I was good at roasting until I started a YouTube channel. Tell us the, you are savage. Not you. Do they have shoes in Uganda? Not the Jordan, the Uganda Jordan one. Wait a minute. We have, we've been talking about her feet. We're not talking about her shoes though. What's up? Her shoes cute. I don't know. I don't know anything about girl shoes. Let's 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 get off of it. All right. Let me stop right there. Let me know what y'all think. Get in the comment section. Like, share, subscribe. I'm done with that. <clears throat> I'm done. But this is another example of why people are reacting in the way that they are. Now she's being she's being doxxed. Okay. Like she wants to be this victim, but I'm just like, sis, you brought all of this on yourself. All of it. All of it, all of it, all of it. So now I'm going to move on to the live stream with Don, or Duke the Don because um, a lot of people were doxing her. Um, and I again, I apologize for that, but I had to show you that. I had to show you that. So then we can move forward to what's going on today. So a lot of people are doxing her. A lot of people have a lot to say regarding, you know, a lot of things that she says versus how she lives her life and things like that. So people were calling her out. I felt like Mike TV did a great job with interviewing her as far as trying to get information that we all wanted to know. Um, also, the black women on this panel also did a great job uh, trying to get information out of her as well. So shout out to y'all. Okay, uh, 2.30. Here it starts. She said, and if you go to the playback, she said, I got billions with an S of views on my channel. No, she doesn't. Yeah, no, she doesn't. You know how much a billion is? She's working with like 70 million views. Yeah, exactly. exactly. A billion, a billion, billion, billion views, views is like fucking China. A billion yeah, views is like right. India. A billion yeah, views is like half like the majority of fucking Africa. Hey, no, y'all, this is some sex. This is some she 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 fucking with a Jedi, Mike a Jedi. You won't hear weird as fuck, Melanie. You see it. If you control in the comments like this, you weird as fuck. Grow, grow up, you 41, grow your grown ass up. <laughs> All right, Melanie King has joined the show. Hello. Let's go ahead and properly set the stage. Before we get going, I've got two simple questions for you, and let's see if we can get two simple answers. Are you ready? Yeah, are we going to have a conversation, or are you just going to throw out accus accusations? Or do you want to have a real conversation, like two adults, and get to any questions that you have? Well, I'll repeat myself, since you need clarification. Because on the last one, you wouldn't answer, and then you hopped off. Now I'm going to mute you, because you're talking out of turn. I literally just told you what's about to happen. You don't understand, so I'm not going to repeat myself. I'm going to ask you two simple questions, and I hope to get two simple answers. And after these two simple questions and two simple answers are out of the way, we can discuss whatever you like. Do you agree to those terms? Am I unmuted? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, let me hear what your questions are. Okay, first question. Why are you here right now? You, you lied and said in your stream that I was Melanie King joins Mike TV. That was a lie, so I decided to join so you wouldn't be a liar. So we did have a conversation earlier on Duke's show? Uh, not, I did not join your channel. I joined did, his channel. So your my, title was a lie. Does my channel say that Melanie King joined Mike TV's channel? Or does That's it say what it says. Mike Melanie TV? King joins Mike TV. When did I join you? You joined history. You joined me in a conversation. You know, you know, you know, you know. So, that so, I, so if you really want to get caught up in semantics, if you're really up here saying that the answer to my question as to why you're here is because you think I lied about my title, so you're here so that my title isn't a lie? Is that what you're trying to say? Yes. That makes no sense, but, but I'll just get to my second question. Okay. Are you suing me? Who said that? I'm asking you a yes or no question. Are you suing me? Am I currently suing you? No. Do you have any plans so those, in the future No, those are your two me? questions. You said those are two questions. So those are two questions. And you just tried to pussyfoot around it. First you said, who said that? And then you said, well, am I currently suing you? No. So now we got to lock you down. Do you plan to sue me? Yes or no? Uh, we're, not, we're not discussing that right now. We're discussing it right now. We're on my show. And I want to know if you plan to sue me. Why are you running from the question? I'm not running from anything. I'd answer my, the question the way I want to answer it. That's it. No, you're going to answer it the way that Mike wants you to answer it, or you can go back to streaming on somebody else's channel in your hotel room. You don't got to be here right now. But your my name is in your mouth every other day. And obviously, you my, and obviously your name being in my mouth makes you feel some type of way because now you're here to talk to Mike. No, actually, I had no idea you existed on the planet. But you're here to talk and to so Mike. I got a call, I I got a call way, right? from two people this morning, mm -hmm. and I was call? like, who, what? What are you talking about? I was listening at my sister. Um, and I was just like, what happened? What yes, are you talking guys, about? Your sister was on my show last night. Go ahead and check out the phone. And so, and so then I was just like, who is this dude? Then I go through, I'm just like, 
Jesus Christ, this dude got my name in his mouth every two seconds. I mean, full, like you live are streams. over here real pressed about it, Melanie. Why are you so mad that I got your name in my mouth? Is, is, is it because not just the fact that I have your name in my mouth, but is it really the fact that I've got documents that I reveal to the public that you didn't what want document? people to be privy What's that to? document? What's that document? Oh, Melanie, don't act like you don't know what this is. Don't act like you don't know what these 37 pages are, Melanie. Exhibit A, your YouTube channel that your, your ex-husband said that okay. you stole from your children. Mike, what? can I ask you a question? Okay. Have you ever, have okay. you ever been married? Let's go ahead have and you do been some reading here. Let's have go ahead and do a little bit of reading. This bitch is asking me my marital status. I don't want you, Grandma. I don't want you. It says right here, I'm also advised that you appropriated the Magic Mojo and Mommy Cray Cray YouTube channels for your own personal benefit and advantage by renaming from them to Melanie King and the Melanie King Podcast. So you telling me you couldn't just start your own channel, you had to steal your baby girl's channels and rename them as yours? Okay. Removing any reference to Mr. Burge and placing your own personal adult content on the channels, I'm advised that you have changed the status of these channels from public to private. Wow. The subscriber base consisting of 262,000 children remains the same, allowing you to make it appear that your adult content has generated a large amount of subscriptions and allowing you to generate a large amount of personal income from these channels to the detriment of the corporation. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. They also got screenshots where your current adult content is on and associated with these channels. Your use of offensive language such as suck a dick and shut up and I'm a loyal slut associated with these channels is not age appropriate and causes extreme confusion in the subscription base. You also posted a video of yourself to the Naya and Ellie TikTok page in which you asked the children's subscribers, does my makeup look slutty? God damn it, that ain't some predatory behavior. You got bullshit, red pill, manosphere talking points that you're projecting out to little children between the ages of four and ten and you don't want to talk about this. You want to talk about whether I've been married before. Jesus Christ. I'm going to take you off mute and let's hear you explain this away. You mute me every time you don't like what I say. So, ahead, um, first of, so let me speak. Thank you. So, um, so what you're seeing right here, guess what? You go to those channels now, they still exist. Uh, so like a reaching, like this is none of your business, first of all. So that's why, why you are you here to defend the it? Case. If it's none of my business, then why are you here to defend it right now? You made it my business when you decided to put my children's name in your mouth. And how did I put your children's name in my mouth? Are because you talking about when I read these documents? Because you're I read your answer it or are you going to over talk me? I'm going to say whatever the hell I want to say on my channel. You ain't over on right, the non-show. You're you over here on my TV. I know. You obviously don't know. You don't want a conversation. You want to be right. No, nah, no. Nah, you am not going to let you do the gaslighting, guys. I'm just not going to let her do the gaslighting. This woman just made a very interesting claim. She made a claim that, mm -hmm. or at least she's trying to throw the wool over our eyes and say, well, my children's channels are still up right now, Mike. How did I change my children's channels if my children's channels are still up, Mike? This is how. Because you were ordered to, you stupid bitch. Let's go to what they said you had to do here. Let's go to what you were required to do when you guys settled outside of court. Within five business days of appointing the custodian, they're going to pay you and Chris each approximately $83,338. Yep, they're also going to put $50,000 in a trust account for your children. Yep. But let's see what you were required to do when it comes to the channels and the accounts. Melanie will provide the custodian login and credentials so as to permit the custodian to fully control the following listed YouTube channels and social media accounts. So when you try to make the claim, oh, but if you go look up my girls' accounts, they're still there, the court told your ass to give up the passwords. They told you to put the control of the account with the custodian. That's why the channels are still up. But apparently you thought that I didn't have that paperwork also. Am I able to answer now? Yeah. First of all, the court, the court didn't order the court the court didn't order anything. No, it was a settlement. Um, you guys chose to come together and this is what you settled on. Right or wrong? Yes. Yes, what? Yes, it's right or yes, it's wrong. I'm answering I'm answering your question. I said you say was that right? And I said yes. Okay. So when and you so, said the court didn't order this, so you guys came me, together and settled on this. Same Do thing. you want to hear what happened or you don't? I really don't I give a not. damn. You're the one coming up so, to disrupt my shit. But go ahead and talk a little bit. About my personal life? <laughs> okay. Oh, Jesus. All right. So <laughs> y'all are so invested in my personal life. Uh, so um, so I don't know. The reason I asked you about your divorce, because I'm not trying to get into your personal business. I'm asking you this because I don't know if you know how these things work. So in a divorce, because um, you were so like talking about all of the accusations, if you go to any lawsuit, which I explained to do as well, Duke the Don, um, anytime a person files a, what you call a lawsuit or anything else, this is not a lawsuit. This is part of the divorce proceeding. So when a person files for divorce, they can say anything. Even Duke said that his ex-wife did the same thing to him. I talk to people every day, especially men, where people- So you're saying your husband's moment, a liar? Oh, absolutely. And that initial thing- and So, so, so what was. part was he, was he lying about? Was he lying when he said that you locked them out of the children's YouTube channels? No. So let me tell you- Oh, wait, wait, wait. You said no. I so was you finishing, did lock them out um, of the YouTube channels. No, no, I did not. I'm finishing- Woman, you said your ex-husband is a liar. I said, did he lie about you locking him out of the YouTube channels? And you just said no. So do you want to qualify your statements? I keep trying to talk. You keep muting me and don't want to have a conversation. You have you, you already have trying a to go all the agenda. way over here when you need no, to stay right No, I'm here. explaining it because just like you have spent hours, days, weeks, months talking about what me, did I think your I have, husband I think I lie about? about what did he lie about? I told you everything in that initial filing. So he lied uh, when he happened? said that you stole one hundred and twenty-six thousand dollars by running absolutely. it up on the corporate absolutely. card. Absolutely, absolutely. And he lied when he said that you promoted adult content to children between absolutely. the ages of four to ten. Absolutely. So 100%. then, what did you do to that man if he felt the need to lie on you like that all of a sudden? I don't. I, I, listen, I don't know. Why do women falsely accuse? How long were you guys married? Why do women call, fall, how long men were you guys falsely married? accuse? 
we were married, if you want to consider the divorce proceedings, um, 11 years. Like so first, so hypothetically, for 11 years, you guys are happily married, and all of a sudden, no, he files no, a suit no, no, against no. you and claims that no. you locked him out of the channel, you spent no, 126000 no, on credit cards, and you're acting that's predatory towards children. No, Mike, so one of the things that happened is, um, I, like, the reason I asked have you ever been married, when a person goes through divorce, the marriage is generally broken down way before somebody So at what point divorce. in time did the marriage get broken down? If you were married for 11 years, I don't what know. Year I, don't, I couldn't, I can't say, it was a you progression. You can't say if it was year four, it could have been year six, you don't know. I don't know, I can't remember what year, it was just a progression of things that built up. When you're in a relationship, there's things that just start to stack up, and people grow distant, things But at some point in time, marriage. that grew so distant. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what was the real years. catalyst. I'll tell you what was the real catalyst. I mean, we don't believe anything you say, but- Can I tell can I ask you, okay, so the first catalyst that happened. Um, our marriage was was very distant for a long time, and um, but stayed in it because when you have children, you know you divorce. I was raised like divorces; you never can get divorced. Like if anybody's raised religiously, I do not claim to be some big Christian woman. In fact, I've talked about this on my channel. Like I just want to throw it out because people think I claim relevancy. To be, I'm a big your Christian. honor, relevancy. How is what I'm you're talking so. about right now relevant to what I asked you? You said that your ex-husband is a liar. I said, what did he lie about? You're saying everything. So then I asked you, what happened in your relationship that made a man that you were married to for 11 years all of a sudden decide to lie on you mm -hmm. and say some very very strange things? Why would he do that? I don't know. Like people lie all the time when they file lawsuits or earn divorce complaints. All right. This is this is a standard practice. Ask any attorney. Well, this is standard I, practice. well I understand. If that accusations, you came up here, if accusations I, was enough yeah, to be true. Yeah. I understand that you came up here for damage control, but um, it's not working for you. Nobody watching right now believes anything you're saying. We've already read through the documents in length. So if you're trying to convince us that you're telling the truth and that your ex-husband is a liar, we don't believe you. Mute it. I'm muted. I don't know what to say. So I was no. finishing the thing. So I don't. Now I'm unmuted. You keep muting me. So when you don't like what I say. No, we're so, talking bullshit and deflecting. You don't know it's bullshit. You don't know me. You don't know my life. If you're going to ask me a personal you question, you don't get away, to honey. You ain't doing okay. nothing up here but deflecting. All right, honey. Listen, honey. We can get into that. But and, that, and now Melanie is slipping into one of her many split personalities. You know she was doing the things with the Muppets. The bitch is crazy. You're not going to call me out my name and call me a bitch. Yeah, well, you act like a bitch. I'll call you a bitch. Well, you're acting okay. You know what? I'm not going to be the same as you. So I'm just waiting on the lawsuit. I would, I'm fin you, you asked you, me one question you and you're skipping threats. around. Stay in focus. Stay focused. You made some big threats. You're talking cash money shit. You, you won't tell me whether or not you're suing me. But on Duke's show, you was threatening a lawsuit, talking about your attorneys watching, the lawyers watching. So on the one hand, you want to threaten me with legal actions, but I can't call you a bitch. When if I was really going to call a spade a spade, you were crusty, dusty, musty, washed up predator of a bitch because them documents said you did some real strange things to some children. Get it out. 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 You're done. You're done. You're done. You're done. Okay. So like I was saying, so a marriage breaks down and any relationship breaks down over a number of years. I can't pinpoint anything, but I will say, um, so one of the things uh, my sister said, she asked you why you are so gung-ho about me because I, uh, quote unquote, in your words, hate black women and trying to tear them down. If you go to my channel and watch all my videos, that's a lie. So if you go through my history and watch every single video, I call out BS when I see it. I don't care about race. So one of the things that happened was the godmother of my channel. Now, ladies, I, I want to point this out. The reason why Mike is going so hard is because she has been demeaning, uh, belittling, shaming black women for a while now, for a while on very large platforms. So if you want to know why he's going so hard, that is why he's going so hard. OK, I don't really agree with the B name. That's just me personally. I just don't agree with that, but that is why he's going so hard. And you will see as we continue on with this uh, live stream. Children that I trusted very much. I found out something that happened. Um, I want to say- I don't care about that story about the godmother of your children. Nobody came to hear about that. So we're not going to let you start some long drawn out story about the godmother of your children. That's part of my marriage story. You asked me that. I never asked you what your marriage story was. I said, what'd you do? You asked me why they broke down. Where he allegedly said, lied happened? and all of this is a lie. Well, then why would he lie? I didn't say you break asked down me about my marriage. marriage. You a yes, you did. You said what caused the breakdown of my marriage? Why did my marriage in what year and what caused you it? That was, your, that was your question. You better give us I'm notes. giving it to you, but you Clef won't let me speak. means quicker, means faster Listen. in a hurry. We, we don't need the women's planning. You can spend hours talking about me, but you need me to hurry up when I'm actually going to give facts and it can't just be these shots that you throw out over the You're going to leave. It's that simple. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. you have two choices. You can submit and do what I tell you to do while you're a guest <laughs> on my show, or you can leave and spend the rest okay. of the night alone in your hotel room. Those are your options. <laughs> what? Oh, you got all day to talk about me. So you gonna let me finish now? I'm trying to explain. You want these answers? You've been asking. You've been calling me. Summoning me up. Ain't nobody so called go. you, and I already got yeah, the answers. Yeah, let's go to your channel. Your channel. Your channel has my name. I already let's, got the answers. See. Your channel has my name in your mouth. Just your last three live streams are all about me. You got hours to do that, but when I come on, to actually put my side of the story, you don't want that. You quote unquote call yourself a journalist or investigator.
But you like curved me. What do you mean? You didn't want to kiss me. But that's like a live thing. Why that. didn't you kiss me on live? Are you? So where were your children at when you were less than after MTR in that clip? Since you claim you have your children. So wait, are time. we going back? What, where are you jumping all over? Where's your kids at when you were in MTR's apartment for the last few days? Embarrassing me. It's not about. Um, there's certain things that should be for. Do you want me to speak on a marriage on this? Like you're doing it all over. Activity with whole Kennedy. Holds out your brain. Holds out your enemy. Five minutes and let her speak. Hey, Melanie, you there? Yeah, so I want to answer the question that he gave me. So what I was explaining is, you said that you were for black women. So one of the things is I found out in 2019, about December, that the godmother of my children, um, something was happening between her and my my ex-husband. And, and uh, my parents were there. I, I'm, I, I'm not going to go into that. So I'm going to tell, you, gonna I'm go gonna tell you something important. Let me speak. I'm going to give you something important. So I found out um, that she, do you guys remember when Black Lives Matter, somebody poured paint all over the Black Lives Matter? Relevancy, did she do Your that? Honor. Did she do that? Yes, yes okay, she did. Okay, so she poured, yes. she poured paint on somebody, on you, your no, husband? No, no, she poured it. She poured it on the Black Lives Matter, and I disassociated from her when she decided, you know those two crazy nuts that decided to, they were super Trump, and they decided okay, to Okay, so that made you and your husband decide to go through a divorce? No, I'm not. Okay, so what? Not let me, you won't let me talk. I'm giving the story. So either let me give it, or not, or you just so want to come up with whatever. So I'm not finished. But, you, but what you're doing is you're, you're, you're drawing it out. It's too much. Once again, I'm muted. As soon as I start speaking, facts on my life that you guys have decided to make. What does Black Lives Matter and paint have to do with your life? Because I'm about to tell you. But you won't let me talk because you have an agenda and a bias. And you I don't have an agenda or a bias. I'm just trying, yes, to, I'm trying to make it make sense. What bias do you believe I have? What bias do you think she has, Melanie? So, like I said, I found out about some things that happened and I found out- You just made a claim that she has a bias. You ain't gonna shy away from that. What bias are you claiming she has, Melanie? So, I'm going to your original question, because this is- No, I want you to answer what bias you believe our other guest has. Like, even people are telling you in your comments, let me speak. I don't care what people in the chat are saying. I want you to- Now, uh, ladies, <clears throat> What have we been learning on this channel about discernment? Narcissism and toxic people tend to not answer questions directly. They will dance around them. They will not answer directly, right? They will dance around the question and then gaslight you and say, but I didn't lie, okay? So, <clears throat> you will see that a lot throughout this entire live stream, okay? So be prepared for that. Sometimes you have to allow them to, to ramble, and then the truth will somehow come out, but you may miss it if you don't listen, okay? So you, sometimes you just got to let them talk, let them talk, let them talk. Um, this has to build up a little bit. It gets juicier towards the middle and the end. So let's continue. Answer the question. What bias do you think she has? Clearly, you have a bias against me. The Don't talk about my bias. Talk about her bias. You just claimed that this woman. Who what, what was that addressed to me? Was that addressed to me, Melanie? Were you saying clearly I have a bias? Were you addressing yeah, that I, to I, me? No, I was talking about the channel. You guys have a bias in general. It didn't sound like you were talking about the channel. It sound like you were talking. Well, about I'm her telling you. So either you're going to tell me what I what I'm thinking in my head. You don't live in my head. You're not God. So I'm answering the questions. You interrupt me every time I try to get facts. You spend all day talking about my personal life. So now I'm explaining. And you spend it. all day talking about everything but the topic at hand, which is these court documents that we ran through. <sighs> Okay, Melanie, so we already talked about the paint. We talked about the, the, the best friend. Let's let's push past that. We got that part of it. Let's move past, like, what does this have to do with your marriage being dissolved and the children? We there. Can we get to that point? We don't okay. have to draw out. So, so he kept, in fact, she actually worked in his ministry. And I begged him to take her off of there, especially because they had an interpersonal relationship that was inappropriate. And then I found out what she did uh, with that and, and, and was basically a criminal. And so what I found, and, and they had something inappropriate. So we went to marriage counseling. I tried to stay in the marriage. Um, I tried to work through it. And he wouldn't disassociate from her. And, um, and now, and I found out really why. And so were they in a relationship? Uh, Is that why they didn't, he didn't disassociate I, with her? I, yes. Oh, okay. So, so you're that your ex-husband cheated on you. I don't know if it was sexual, but, um, cheating I found cheating. out. Well, well, I mean, yeah, if, if, I'm not going to say it was sexual. I don't have facts. I'm not so, gonna so, so, so why does it take you 20 minutes to say my ex-husband cheated? Because I don't, because I think things have context. Things aren't black and white. We're not children. Like, they and, 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 and we, paint, and we also Black Lives Matter, this is the cheating. Yeah, come on. I don't see how Black Lives Matter and paint and all this shit segues into your husband cheating. We need your answers quicker than this. I speak the way I speak. I don't know. I, I'm not, like, you call That's me old valid. And grandma. So, That's valid. Like, I can I take can, that. Like, I can either explain it or, or not. It's like, you want me to get to a point. I speak how I speak. So you're claiming that your husband so, lied and everything in the suit and that he cheated on you. 
I, again, I want to make this clear because I do not throw out false accusations. I do not know about a sexual relationship, but I do know she was dangerous in my opinion. And she denigrated black people. Um, so can we say that she was dangerous because she could manipulate your husband? Because you're saying that he must've had some type of, he believed in her more seen, than you. Have you seen, have you seen the video of what happened with the Black Lives Matter paint and seen how insane it was? Like, what does that got to do with you and your husband? Did they go throw the paint, Melanie? Like, why you keep going back to that? Like, what are you talking about right now? Honestly, I don't understand where we're going with this. You're trying to say that your husband lied when he said you locked him out of the YouTube channel, rebranded it as your channel, and then spent $126,000 on corporate credit cards. I said it was false. I said it was you false. You ran through everything and you're saying it's it false, false, but you can't provide no evidence. Where does the final judgment say that I did that? The final judgment showed that you're required to relinquish control from the channel and give it to a custodian and that you and your husband were both paid out about 80, right. So let me tell you what happened. So, so if the settlement you. said that you had to give up control of your channel, then that means you did take control of it. Obviously, the settlement proves that some of that had to have been factual or else you wouldn't have settled to give up the channel to a custodian. <sighs> OK, so back on point. So what happened was that I so if you want to skip all of that, you ask me one question. You don't want those answers because you don't like them. So now we're going to move back and move the goalposts back over here. So now we'll get into this. I control the channels from day one. I've always controlled the channels. We don't believe because... you, so you don't have to get into a long, drawn-out thing about you controlling channels. I, I don't care about that. Nobody asked you about that. You just asked me about the channels, and did I, and I locked them out, and I'm explaining it. Every time I start to explain it, you don't like it, so you mute me, so you don't have to because, hear the truth. Because Melanie is so much to where a person loses track. Like, you do this babbling to where it's almost like a person doesn't even remember their question because you go on about everything else. Like it's not around or And that's exactly what she likes to do. That's why she was just on with Duke for damn near three hours, not saying anything, deflecting and detracting. Come on now. You ain't going to get on my TV and do a whole bunch of word salad. I'm not going for it. So if I say, is your husband lying, and you say he is, and we say we don't believe you, then there's nothing else to talk about. We don't need an explanation. We don't need you to try to convince us to believe you. We don't believe a damn thing you say. How can we trust a bitch who rearranges her face and don't tell nobody? My personal life. If you have a narrative on my personal life and you want to keep spinning these narratives and falsehoods, then it is what it is. Either you want the facts and have a conversation or you want some gotcha moment to keep like you keep came this up to for me. Views. I did not go over to your channel. So I don't my want name or is in need anything. My I don't want, need, nor desire to get anything from you. You're here with an agenda. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. Okay. I'm with an agenda. All right. All right. All right. So we're going to ignore what your channel does. So, so is it not an agenda, Melanie, if you're trying to clear up what's being said about you? If you, you won't feel let like me talk. You I'm, won't I'm let just, me talk. You have I haven't overspoke you. you I haven't. I, if we're two women talking, I'm trying to talk to you. Like I allowed you to speak. I didn't okay. speak over you. And what I'm okay. saying is, if the if you feel the agenda is that we're trying to set you out to be something that you're not, and you're trying to say Mike has your name in his mouth, this all comes from you being on a podcast where a woman this like basically tried to rewrite Black history. So it's like we're trying to figure out how is this Black woman that talks so much about women need to know their place and they need to know like how to treat a man and how to get a husband. How is she allowing this white woman to talk these points? Like you never said anything about that. If we want to pivot, let's pivot to some real shit since you want to know why Mike got your name in his mouth. Like I said, this conversation's all over the place. You go from this thing to this thing, now it's to a podcast. Like, like, can we keep some You wanted to know how it started. Room? That's how it started. So now you know the, the origin story no, of how actually, you got here. Actually, no, actually, no. He's been making videos about me way before I was on there. So that's a lot. Yeah, and you know what? That shocked me too. Girl, why? You were nice the way you looked. What about you? Did you feel you needed to change so much that you look like a totally different person? I'm not going there. So once again, to stay on topic, no, she asked you a very specific question from a woman to a woman, from one black woman to another. Be respectful and answer her question. No, first of all, you're asking me, do you realize how? To me, a better question is why she did that to herself and then why she makes fun of black women when it comes to like Western women, modern women, black women, plastic surgery, BBLs, really any of that. Like, why do you talk down on those women when you've done so much to your appearance? That's the only thing that I care about. It's like, uh... Don't you think that's a little hypocritical for you to do that because you went out and you changed yourself to make yourself feel better and now you're placing judgment on other women who are doing the same thing. That's what's weird for me. I really don't care about her changing her appearance, rearranging her face, whatever she wanted to do. Listen, it's not my business. It's not my body. I don't care. But then when you pass judgment on the next woman, that's what I don't understand. That's the part that I care about. It's like, what was, what's the reason for that? You're going to answer her question or you're going to leave the show right now. You have two options. This is a dictatorship. It's not a democracy. You answer or you leave. Okay. I see what this is. All right. Don't let have the door hit you on your way out, Grandma. Hold, oh, hold, hold on. Hold have on. Hold those points. Hold those points. Uh, a couple of yes or no answers. Now, uh, Melanie. You know, guys, I'm sorry. I'm too heated. I'm too emotional. I'm going to drop myself. Oh, no, bro, 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 please. Please. Pretty please. I believe it's just you and Melanie now. You can go ahead and speak with her. Mike has dropped himself away. Okay. Now. Melanie, mm -hmm. are you? What's your, name? What's your name, sir? Oh, my name is Leonard. Leonard Roy. You can Google okay, me. Leonard Remix okay. Roy. Historic house oh, music no. DJ, Chicago no, icon. Just, I'm that no, dude. Just, 
No, your name wasn't on it. Okay, I'm getting it in. No, your name wasn't on there, so I just like when I'm having a conversation, just like the name. Oh, okay, all right. Well, Leonard, just Leonard or Len the Nerd, as some used to call me in the hood. Now, you are legally correct. I mean, not correct. You are legally divorced. Yes or no? Correct. Correct. So that's a yes answer. Mm -hmm. You have primary custody of the children that were conceived in the marriage. I have soul. Well, correct. I have soul. I have soul. What's the difference between soul and primary? Um, when the other parent uh, is completely absent, um, um, physically and uh, not seen or talked to your children uh, in over a year, I think most people consider that soul custody. Well, considered and legally, because see, I divorced three women. Mm-hmm. I'm a divorce expert. Okay, mm-hmm. soul custody. The way you're trying to describe it means he does not have to pay child support. See, your definition of soul custody is just like if I marry a woman that has children and I adopt them and it absolves the man of all responsibility of the children. So soul and primary custody, they're the same thing. That's well, what I asked. Do you have well, primary? I remember, I remember this picture. What year was this? This was like 2000 and- I'm not talking about the picture. No, no, we, we have well, a conversation. Up there, it's, y'all are so excited about what I look like. I'm just- You were so I'm pretty though. I thought you were so pretty. I, 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 thought I, I think I'm pretty too. So I can change so much. Hold on now. Okay. My apologies, Leonard. My apologies. Okay. All right. Now, oh, I get, am I unmuted now? I guess I'm unmuted. I don't know. Someone had to tell me. No, you're, you're, you're unmuted. I can hear you, Leonard. Okay. I'm not getting into your personal appearance. You know, I'm a lighter skinned brother than you are a light skinned black woman. What you see on the camera here actually is a Georgia tan because, you know, I've been getting some sun trying to, you know, bronze myself. So, you know, then we're not talking, I'm not talking about the picture. I'm on the legal standings and everything. Cause you asked Mike, well, okay. were you married and this and that? Like that's a one up. You are talking to a man that has divorced three mm-hmm. different women. I filed. Mm. Now, if a man statistically mm. 69% of women, not just black mm-hmm. women, women nationwide divorce men. Thirty-one percent of men divorce their woman. So if a man divorces his wife, it's definitely something wrong with that woman. That's not true. Oh, it's not. I mean, Who, I, the numbers. Okay, the numbers are not my personal information, my personal life. I mean, I can give you. I'm not asking you about your personal life. We gotta do a quick swap out. Jessica D wants the stage with Melanie. Wait, did they take? Did they take him out? Yeah, because he was. It, it, um, Melanie, I don't, I don't know where he was going right. with that. Y'all, but, didn't, y'all but, didn't even tell him. Dang. Uh, but what, but I think I think what kind of does make sense. It would as a woman who just I'm just thinking as our youth looking to you as someone saying that. I think she cut out. I think I think she cut out. Is it me or can y'all hear? I don't. I hear can you. hear you. Can you hear me? Now I can hear you. Okay. okay. okay so as like you know what a rebellious woman is. You know what like 304s look like and what a man doesn't want. Me as a grown woman, I would not feel comfortable allowing my young nieces or young daughter to listen to you when you're you're divorced and you didn't divorce, but your husband divorced you. So I, I kind of see how that's a bad look. And it does kind of make us wonder like, hmm, if you're such a good woman and you're able to teach the youth wh- why they shouldn't be 304s anymore, why would a man leave you? Well, you know, okay, there's a couple questions. There was a couple things in there. So Get, like if I'm such a good woman, I've never claimed to be a good woman. Um, I've, if you've ever watched my channel, which I feel like a lot of you guys have not, I've actually owned up and said one of the reasons why I got on the journey to do this because instead of what a lot of people will do after divorce, a lot of women, you know, blame the man, you know, do all you know, and and and, and deflect. I chose to look at you know look at myself and say like, regardless of what he did, regardless of how I feel about that, at the end of the day, I can only own me. I can only be accountable to, for what my part that I played in it. So I went on a journey to to really, you know, self-reflect, see what are the issues that I have. Now, I actually think it is a badge of honor to not file or cheat. And actually, this is why a lot of men follow me because I'm one of the few women who did not file or cheat. And but, so, but you you allege that your husband, now you didn't say physically cheat, but he definitely had some type of, uh, he had some type of like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I wanna make sure I say the right word. Like he believed in your friend more than he did you to a point where you felt like it, it was putting tension in the marriage. So like you did, there was a reason, I right? I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say believed in, no, I didn't divorce because of that. I actually tried to stay for my children because at the end of the day, he was, um, my belief was that he was a good father and um and he was and i and i still while when he was active in their lives while we were married he was a great father so what and about so you I, couldn't so be a good wife for a good father to good children what about melanie because you said you own your badge so tell us what your badge what's on your badge what's on your coat say, that says melanie's grown from whatever took her out of that marriage because that that's what it's looking like especially when a man has a foul paperwork because he felt like you were being deceptive to the family 
you were using the children. So what's on your badge? No, no, no. So that's that's actually a false claim. So that's why I was trying to explain the divorce thing, but we've kind of like jumped all over the place. So, so your husband put a false claim or? Yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely, 100%. Okay. That was 100% false claim. Just like anybody does in divorce, just like if you ever broken up with somebody and somebody talks ish and lies on you like in a lawsuit, just because somebody said something and filed something doesn't make it gospel, doesn't make it facts, doesn't make it true. And that's what I was trying to explain. <clears throat> but you're, you're just... able to rebuttal though, right? Like it's, I, I don't understand, like even if you feel like it's it's taking you out of, of, I guess like a traditional woman to go against your husband, but my God, you'll wear a scarlet letter of lies? That's what you're telling me you would do that? Wait, what? You'll wear a scarlet question. letter of lies because you're saying the things What's he's putting in that letter. A scarlet letter was actually, um, if you look at the historical facts. But letter, we're talking about for you. That's why I said of lies. That's why I said of lies. The opportunist and Melanie. Is we gonna do over here. I finally said, you know what? I'm gonna step in my purpose. I'm gonna I'm call those things. Okay, so I wanted to switch gears. I don't know if you guys heard me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I wanted to switch gears here because um, this was another video that was done by Ringo TV. I believe that's the name. And she talks a little bit about her divorce at a later time. So let's just play this video. Things out that need to be called out and I'm gonna help the black community in, in particular. Are you serious? <laughs> Are you serious, Melanie? Let, let, let's, let's just stop the cap. You don't care about the black community. You don't live in the black community. Um, you don't represent the black community. You never did. But all of a sudden now, you feel that you're calling, mind you, is to speak on the black community. <laughs> I tell you, man, the opportunist in Melanie is clearly seen. If you can't see that, something's wrong with you. Which I've always felt a call for. She says she always felt a call for. She always felt a call for to speak on the black community. That's a lie. No. You see a money-making opportunity. That's what you see. Because, And I just want to say this real quick. Are y'all not tired of talking about the Black community? Because I'm tired. I'm tired of talking about the Black community. At this point, if you want to do your part, look at you, look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, are you doing your part as far as how you show up in the world? That's it. Focus on you showing up. That's it. Okay? That's it. If everyone would just turn to their mirror and focus on themselves, oh my God. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Instead of trying to tell people what to do, control people, tell people, how about you just be that example, right? You talk it, you walk it, you are it for your children. How about we just focus on that? Because this, uh, what's it called? SBE, shame, blaming, and explaining. That shit ain't working. Some of y'all need, it ain't working. The world isn't becoming better. If anything, it's getting worse. So why not just pull back your energy, put the focus on you, your family, your children, and be the example. If every person were to do that, the community would improve overnight. Wouldn't you think? It's just something to think about. But trying to be the spokesperson, I, I, I think we're beyond that now. I think it's time for us to focus on ourselves, go to therapy, focus on our children, break generational curses within the family, and keep it at that. Because you're not going to be able to save everybody anyway. But this SBE, it needs to just, it just needs to stop. It's not working. It's not. If anything, it's making people angry. It's making people more aggressive. People are wanting to argue, debate. And we just don't get anywhere. There's no real solution. So I think people need to just turn to their mirror and just focus on themselves. Because if we take away the money, 
would you stand up and speak for the black community? You see, Melanie, when I was on YouTube from 2006, I've been putting in work for years. There was no ad revenue. We weren't getting paid. But I had the passion and the call to speak truth to power. And I did it faithfully. No one paid me. There was no cash apps. There was no super chats. There was no PayPal's. There was nothing. You had to do what you do because you loved it. But you are being motivated by the dollar. You're not being motivated by the love for the black community. So stop it. Because we're not buying that nonsense. We can see the hidden agenda. Let's go. Not just the black community, but the greater community. But Now it's not the black community, but the greater community. <laughs> Make up your mind which community you want to speak for. <laughs> now check this part out, fam. Got to start with the people that look like me. You got to start off with the people that look like you. <laughs> so now all of a sudden we look like you. But if you look at all of your older videos and the kitty videos, you are looking like the other people. Uh, ladies, I've been trying to warn you about this for some time now. Black women, come to the front real quick, okay? Now, I know a lot of people are denouncing and separating themselves from Black manosphere and everything because they're being investigated by the FBI. But they do this thing. If they are SBE, they are part of black manosphere. They shame, blame, and explain to women. That's what they do. It's a manipulation tactic. Accountability is truth. I, I keep telling y'all that. Shame, blame, and explain is manipulation. Truth, you can't really run from that. You can run from shame. You can run from blame. You can run from a person who's trying to explain to you while shaming and blaming you, but you cannot run from the truth. That's what accountability is. It's truth. It's confidence, too, when you can own it, right? So a lot of these male podcasters, manos, black manosphere, uh, content creators, and things like that, they like to shame, they like to blame, and then explain where you went wrong with your life. And you guys feed into it. Every day. It's sickening to watch. It really is. It's very sickening. If you need help, I recommend therapy. There are therapists on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I try to share them constantly on my community tab. Not sure if you're tapping into that. And when you tap into their content, your nervous system is not activated. Oh, my gosh. You're not subjecting yourself to verbal abuse when you listen to real therapists, counselors who are actually giving their giving away free time to help you to actually help you because they could charge you but they're doing it for free they're giving out free information so ladies okay i just told you what they're doing i just gave you the formula it's s b e shame blame and explain accountability real accountability is truth real confidence is accountability and ownership. So let's stay focused. Let's stay focused. If you really need help, there are therapists on YouTube. To subject yourself to verbal abuse, that just does not make sense to me. You are wearing wigs like the other women. It doesn't appear to me that you want to be where we are. You weren't living in the black community. You weren't around black people. You didn't even talk like the average black person. I got receipts for days. Trust me, you don't want no smoke with Ringo TV Raw. We the best in the game with the reaction videos. Let's go. And to call things out. And to say, you know, enough is enough. And so now you're here to call things out. <laughs> you're here to say enough is enough. Right. But you weren't calling nothing out when you was making the kitty videos. You weren't calling nothing out when you were married. Right. But now that you're not married, now you want to call out things in the black community. But you don't want to call out anything in the other communities. <laughs> Ain't that ironic, fam? How people that live the luxurious life. The high life, fancy cars, fancy homes and cars and clothes. 
when things fall apart, all of a sudden now, the first thing is get into the ministry and or speak about the black community. You know, I'm thankful to Kevin Samuels because now she's thankful for Kevin Samuels. Oh, boy, man. How much promotion? How much times are you going to thank him? But I never heard you thank your own husband. So your husband didn't teach you anything. Everything you learned about being a so-called woke woman came from Kevin, but nothing came from your man in whom you claim you got with because he was in the ministry. He really helped renew my mind. He helped you renew your mind. The Bible says to be renewed by the word of the most high, not the word of Kevin Scamuels. So your mind have not been removed. Your mind have been perverted. It's some of the feminist mindsets that I've had that really... You still have feminist mindsets. You just are not dealing with it. ...have decimated the Black community. Now you concern about the Black community being decimated? Stop the cap, fam. ...have really have us in our worst... I do have a question, though. Why is feminism so threatening to men in their manhood? I don't understand that. Like, why are men threatened by women having equality rights because that's what that's what feminism is now me personally i don't consider myself a feminist because i felt like over the last few years it has became really extreme and i just don't align myself with some of those things like i can't do what a man can do nor do i want to but when it comes to true feminism at the core of what Feminism is, it's about women, equality, and a patriarchy. That's what it's really about. Why are men threatened by that? Why does that threaten a man's manhood for women to have equality and rights in the system that really wasn't made for us either as women? And then especially as Black women, it wasn't made for us. So why are, why are men threatened by that? It just doesn't make sense. It's very weird to me. You're a man... You're born in a system that was made for men, but I was born in a system that wasn't made for my skin and it wasn't made for my gender either. So I don't understand. It's just a question that I have. Why are men threatened by that? It doesn't make sense, but I'm going to switch back to Mike TV. I just wanted to show you guys this clip here. I may switch back again. I may go back and forth. But I just want I just want a man to answer that. Like, why? Why do you guys care? It doesn't make sense. Like a woman. Why are you threatened by her? I don't get that. I added lies. So I didn't just say a scarlet letter. Oh, I said a scarlet letter. Who's wearing a scarlet letter of lies? Like, you I'm, are because you said that your husband might be. Can you reframe okay. it real quick? Okay, I, so. I, I think I'm not getting it. It's, it's like, I don't know what okay, time so. it is for y'all, but it's like six in the morning and I've been up. It's like, oh, okay, so basically okay. you said that the, what your husband said, there are accusations they are not true. What he put into that, well, that document. 100%, 100%. Okay, so you never rebuttaled back. There's nothing in that paperwork that says, hey, Melanie actually rebuttaled. Yes, it did. What, what no, page? No, what no, page? That's what you, no, that's you're looking at one document. So, Can you bring up yours? Because it'll help. It'll help no, us understand where you're coming from. Because right now, y'all have, okay, you're not letting me talk. Like, you ask me, and then if I say something, you're not going to believe me anyway. But, like, either you want to know my personal story, and, and I'm going to tell not you. Not the story, Melanie, what? but just the answer okay. to the question. I don't need the okay. personal story, just the answer to the question. <laughs> What, what's the what's the thing? Why didn't I rebut? I did. Because when you file for divorce, when a person files for divorce, you have 30 days to do a response. So I filed a response saying it was all lies. So can we and pull that up? We had we had documentation. I don't have that on me right now. Since no, I'm so saying, no, no, I'm saying, it. I'm saying, is that public record? Is your rebuttal public yes, record? Y yes, okay. yes. It's part of a divorce proceeding. This is basic standard knowledge. If, if anybody who knows anything about the legal system, this is basic. Anytime anybody files a lawsuit and or a divorce, like a, 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 a file for divorce, you have to respond within 30 days legally. So that's what I did. My lawyers do. Hey, wait, hold on, guys, real quick, real quick. I'm going to mute everybody for just a second, and then we're going to keep it showing. Um, she claimed she had proof, yet she settled. If she actually had proof, and if he was really just lying, then why did she agree to settle? It don't make no goddamn sense, but I digress. Unspoken vibes, go ahead, Op. Yeah, okay, I just want to address this real quick. So um, you said that your, your husband basically made those lies about you uh, locking out the kids accounts for the YouTube, correct? At Melody King? Was it correct that you said your husband lied when he said that you locked him out the U kids' YouTube I account? I can't hear. It's, it's breaking up. Hold on, it's breaking up. I can't hear. I, I can't, I can't hear. Amherst, can you hear me? It's I can hear you loud and clear, loud and clear. 
Okay, so she can't hear me, guys. So I don't know. Uh, Mike, you just might have to drop me down. If you can hear, can you repeat his question? I can't hear. It's breaking up for me. Oh, he said, he said, well, um, I'm sorry, say it one more time. Because if you can't hear, I could hear him. Say it one more time and I'll repeat it for her. Okay, I got you. So uh, she said that her husband was lying when, he, when she said, when he said that she locked him out of the kids' YouTube, YouTube account. Is that correct? You heard that, Melanie? I didn't for some reason. Okay. Up for me. Okay. He said, so is it a lie when your husband said that you locked them out of the children's YouTube accounts? Is that a lie? Yeah. Okay. So is she aware that her sister came on Mike's live last night and said yes. that her husband actually funded the accounts, funded the YouTubes? So why would he have to lie about that? Is anyone talking? Melanie, I know you can hear him. Come on, girl. I cannot, Let's not do I, this. I cannot hear. I cannot hear. I don't see he it. said that your sister said that your ex-husband funded those accounts. Wait, what? Your sister, came, your, your sister came on last night and said that your husband funded all of the YouTube accounts that are attached to your children's names that are still the accounts you are using to this day. Uh, I don't believe she said that. And she, she did. It's a lie. If you want to check my TV channel, that. you can. That's, that's not true. So either she misspoke or that's been misrepresented, but that's absolutely not true. So. Well, when you were on three way with her last night, you should have probably cleared that up because it is on my was on well, whatever she wasn't. Her well, you should have had I didn't her know back. about this. I didn't know about this until this morning. Well, she was on here this morning. So it was three way this morning. But what I'm saying is, it's like. With your who sister, with? with your sister, Melanie. But who, who, who she was on three way with me? With you, yeah. And my sister was not on three way on. Then how you already got a lawsuit ready for Mike? Then when you talk to your sister, how you get a lawsuit together? I didn't say I have a lawsuit together. You definitely said some lawyers are going to be talking to Mike. So, so how you get no, all I this didn't. information? I never said my lawyer. Okay, we got to go back to Dukes. Then we got to go back to Dukes. Yeah, read exactly what I put. Read exactly what no, I put. No, because you said no. Hold on. Are my lawyers listening? I, you lean forward and act like you were tuning into something so you can record or whatever right, that so is. You now. Just, you... And she also said that she's making sure to screen record for her attorneys. But listen how she wants to play chicken shit and act like a little bitch when she's up on the panel now. Now she don't want to talk that lawyer shit. But on Duke's show, she want to threaten lawsuits and this and then that. Look at how these modern women behave. All right, so I guess I'll move ahead with the next question real quick. So um, on your kid's uh, YouTube channel, Mommy Cray Cray, and it was the other one, did you, or is it correct that you changed the name to Melody King or Melody, Melody King Podcast? She's saying she can't hear me again. She hear you. I can't be doing this. If you're going to play these childish ass games, Melanie, girl, you hear this man. Stop playing. I didn't hear him, so I, I don't know what to tell you. How you hearing me then? I've been, sitting here, I've been sitting here talking to you, answering questions. Like I'm not on here to cap and say I can't hear. If his phone, if it's breaking up for me on my end, I, I took my headphones out. See what's that? It's okay. While they're having their technical difficulties, I have Uncle Rico. Before I bring you on, the question is: Why are men threatened by feminism? Feminism. It's not sexual liberation. It's not 304 culture. It's not twerking. The core of feminism is simply this, women having equal rights and equality in a patriarchy system that was created by men. Why are men threatened by that? Good, af good afternoon, Yanni. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing well. Uh, let me just first say thank you for your streams. I've been watching them the last couple of weeks. They've been pretty informative and much needed. So I thank you for your leadership in this space. Thank you. Uh, I will say this, I, the way I think of it is from the standpoint, I guess, let's be honest, we're talking about black men because mm -hmm. I don't honestly think, you know, the uh, white men are as intimidated by feminism as say black men or maybe some other minorities. And I mm -hmm. think it's simply because it's, for me, I've always told black men that they spend too much time focusing on feminism, which mm -hmm. isn't their, which isn't our problem. And I'm a black man myself, but where we fall in the hierarchy of patriarchy, mm -hmm. patriarchy is our problem. And I've mm -hmm. also told them all the time that we could do everything that we want to stamp out feminism. Mm -hmm. It will not move black men, not one inch on the hierarchy of patriarchy where white men sit at the top. So mm -hmm. I think it's it's pointless to be battling a fight that's that's just dumb. You know, the only allies as black men that we have are black women. They're the mm -hmm. ones who have stood by us through everything we've been through. But for some reason, I guess it's it's the art of punching down, you know, and, and we're not even winning that battle itself. So uh, we look at these places. So. If we get into these spaces where if you say something, Yanni, that will tickle my ear as a black man, that will mm -hmm. somehow make me feel empowered, although I have no power, then I gravitate towards it. 
And that's what we find in this situation. Do you think that black women have overcompensated the like the black man as far as trying to build him up to feel empowered, even though he was never in that position? Do you think we overcompensated that? Yeah. So, so you're speaking to the fragility. Yes. Right. I think I think to a point more than what's necessary. And I try to tell black men, it's not black women's responsibility to heal us. You know, I, I, I always practice a philosophy or my thought is the only person that's responsible for healing a broken person is the broken person themselves and the person, maybe the person that broke them. Right. But right. All, all others have no responsibility. So I, I really don't believe these young men are as broken as they believe they are. They're just fed this endless stream of, you know, it's sort of like they're being taught to go after things that they don't necessarily need. So they feel a lack of it makes them mm -hmm. feel less than. And they overlook the valuable things in their life that actually exist. So if they can't get what they want, while they may not need it, they're going to be upset about the very thing that they have, which they believe makes them feel less than adequate. And again, I constantly fight back and push back on this. Why are you beating up your only allies? Because without black women, we ain't got nothing else. We really don't. There, there, there's nobody else. That, there will be no other community, you know, championing for us. But it's, it's, it's like talking to a wall. It just really is there. And I will say this, the, the thing that makes me feel a little bit good is that I know that this is not, this is the YouTube space mm -hmm. phenomenon. It is starting to spill out, but mm -hmm. I know a lot of young black men who don't even traffic in this, thank God, who don't listen to this. And, um, but it's just the number, if it's 20, 25%, that's too much. Right. That's just too high of a number. So this is my question mm -hmm. with you having this knowing, right? Um, what advice would you give to black women? What should they do? What should they focus on? I, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard because you don't never want to tell an ally not to be supportive, but I, mm -hmm. you know, I, it's like, like, and I, for full disclosure, I'm an older black man. I'm mm -hmm. 58. So okay. I say, I speak from a space that like, I'm an ally of a lot of communities. But as an ally, I try to tell people, don't get in front. An ally should be in the back. I'm going to so if I if I'm an ally for women, so Yana, mm -hmm. I would never be on a panel or a space about women and talking more than you. That's not mm -hmm. my space. I'm just there mm -hmm. to support you. I'm there to right. do more listening than talking. Okay. I think black women do too much. You know, you know, I even agree. when we look at a lot of the criminal justice stuff. Mm -hmm. While we may be the larger percentage of people who get caught up in it, mm -hmm. you know, I, I tell people all the time, black women love black men more than we love you guys back and even more than we deserve. And that's just mm. a fact. As mm. a black man, I know that, you know, um, you just got to let us stand on our own. You got to right. push them. I'm not saying, you know, I'm not talking divestor terminology. Right, 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 right. I'm just mm -hmm. saying, you got to stop babying us. Right, Especially hands off. Adult grown men, and if they want to be out for all this other stupid stuff they talk, then let them be it. Right. And if not, continue, for every black sister out there, continue doing what you're doing, continue driving, don't make any excuses, don't say you sorry, be the best that you can be, and that's all there is to it. But do what you're doing, Yanni. Just keep doing your thing. Thank you, Uncle Rico. I appreciate you for coming up here and sharing that. I, I really do. All right. Thank you for letting me up. You're welcome. You have a nice day. You too. Woo. Mm. I've been telling y'all. I, I, I feel like I'm just speaking in circles at this point. Black women need to just focus on themselves. It was a lesson I had to learn with my own brothers, you know, they just gonna have to figure it out and it's hard right because you you love them you do but sometimes you got to learn how to love people from a distance and yes 
it's hard to watch, it's hard to witness, but sometimes that is what it takes. And black women just don't know how to just let go. Just let go. They'll figure it out. Wish them well. It's real simple. It's still breaking up. Like, don't tell me. Repeat what you said, sir, so, so somebody can help can someone me. Else, can someone else repeat what he's saying? I cannot hear him. It's coming in muffled and broken up. I don't know what else to tell you. All right, Amherst, if you could just do me a favor and ask her this. She said it is a lie. I've not seen anything. Are y'all talking? I don't Go hear ahead, you. sir. Go ahead, sir, and talk. I hear you, I hear you but I don't okay. hear you. Okay, he gonna repeat it, Melanie. He gonna repeat it. Okay, yes. Yeah. Ask her if she said it's a lie that she changed the kid's uh, YouTube channel name to Melanie King and Melanie King Podcast. He wants to know if it's a lie if you change the kid's name, Melanie, on the YouTube podcast. Did you change it to yours from Mommy Cray Cray to Melanie King? Did you do that or is that a lie? Okay, so I'm, I'm thinking that y'all are so disrespectful, Jesus, with a name called. It's so childish. Like, either you want information or you need information. I, Melanie, I just said it. I can't, no, because I'm just seeing the, the names of these. It's just insane. So, anyway, so uh, that's a lie. So, do you, yeah, I don't want the answer. Y'all just want a yes or no. So, I'll just leave it at that. <clears throat> So will you be will, so will you be like filing charges against your ex husband for defamation? Like no, my divorce is over with. So what was finalized? You okay with him just having all these lies on public record about you? Yeah, because it was proven false and final record proved it. I, I don't go back and forth throwing shots with people. That's not my personal. Then why are you here? Because you're speaking on me and my children. In my personal life, like, why are you talking about my personal life? Why are you so invested in my life? So you pull up to every channel who speaks about no, you, no, every YouTuber, no, wait, 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 every YouTuber who makes a stream about you, you come up and talk to them. No. Then what's so special about me? Uh, you seem to have a deep obsession with my personal life, and you decided to pull up my. So, so because you think I have a deep obsession, that's what's didn't. special about me, or is it the fact that I'm the only YouTuber who pulled up the receipts on your ass, where your oh, husband said you stole the YouTube channel, life. locked them out of the account, Here. and then spent one hundred and twenty-six thousand dollars on the corporate credit cards, and then started pumping out adult content to your children's two hundred and sixty-two thousand young subscribers who are between the ages of four and ten? But you came up here on Duke Show, you came up here on my show to give us a whole bunch of womanese because you can't run from these receipts, but you can deflect from them. You can deflect. Okay. Is that a question? I don't, I don't know. I have a question. And Jessica D, you're finally off mute. Go ahead, Jessica. Thank you, Mike. I have a question, Melanie. Mm -hmm. um, so when you talk about modern women, this rebellious women, that um, are you projecting? Because it seems like that umbrella that you cast on women, particularly Black women, a lot of these things pertain to you. Um, we've seen you on camera, drunk twerking. We know that you're a single mom. Uh, what makes you qualified to provide relationship advice to anybody when you yourself have a failed marriage? I don't know, nothing makes me qualified, but if people rock with me and they feel like it resonates with them, it's up to those individuals. If you don't rock with me, you don't rock with me. If you don't think I'm qualified, I'm not qualified. I'm not here to, like, you know, like, everybody doesn't have to like me or like what I have to say, but the people who do, they do. Okay, well, the reason I ask if you're projecting is because you seem to have a lot of negative energy, a lot of vitriol for Black women in particular. And where? I'm just trying to understand where, where that, where? Um, where? Where, tell me specifically yeah, where I've had vitriol specific. for Black women that I have not had. And, and, and when you say vitriol, tell me exactly what Vitriol, as in the energy, the hate that you spew. What, what, give me specific. Way. Energy is a very vague term. What's energy? Um, I need you know exactly what I'm saying. I can give you I don't. Specific. I deal with facts and specifics. Yeah, so let me finish. I can give you an example. An example is when that young lady with the blue hair was on King Rich's show, and mm -hmm. she was just expressing her perspective on something. And before she could even get her word out and finish her sentence, you guys kind of just like dogged on her and started really like screaming at the girl, saying she's rebellious, she doesn't follow men, she's this and that. And I just want to know why this young lady needed to subject to or submit to King Riches when that's not her husband. Um, your whole point during that whole session was you're a rebellious woman, you should submit to men, you should submit to this and that. And you were just completely misquoting the Bible the entire time. Ephesians says women should submit to their husband. Why submit to your husband? Not some random podcaster who's screaming at you at the top of his lungs. So what are your thoughts on that? That's didn't it. Mike, didn't Mike tell me to submit to him? And isn't he a random podcaster on his we're platform? We're not talking about Mike. We're talking about you. No, I'm saying just if you want to, if you want to, if you want to give you an example of a woman who is in trial and spewing victory to women, why don't you keep that same energy for yourself? Because everything that you keep on that goes to you. Who says I don't? I'm not you. And my second question is, when have I set up and said I'm perfect? Yeah, and my second question is, hold on, guys, real quick. I'm gonna mute everybody for a second. Um, somebody in the chat earlier posted a very good comment. They said that she called the woman with the blue hair a whore of Babylon because she was twerking. But here we got this broad going from crying to twerking in less than 10 seconds. So I guess Melanie thinks she's a whore of Babylon since she also twerks. Wait, hold on, you about to twerk? I gotta be a boss. Well, uh, oh, oh. I guess this is how whores of Babylon get down. Isn't this the, the pot calling the kettle black? I digress. Yeah. Right. Like you mute me when you don't like it. Thank you, Mike. That was an excellent pivot into my next question. Um, Melanie. Now y'all know what I'm about to do. Shout out to the black women that came 
and defended this girl because she went viral over that clip. Let me see if I can find it. And I felt so bad because I just, I, she was dealt with so aggressively and she wasn't combative. She wasn't argumentative. She didn't cuss. She didn't, you know, call her out her name. She didn't do any of that. When you come outside with the blue hair, the hair, the eyelashes, the makeup, the everything, yes, it just screams like she's just one of those girls, bro. Girl. See girls, like Young stripper Miami. culture, like that kind of shit. Can like, I just say one thing to that? You can't say nothing to that because I'm telling you I how can't. guys perceive it. So that's how we perceive it. Okay. Do you get what I'm saying? What are you going to say it's that's going to negate girl, what I'm saying? I'm an artist, okay? So when I'm on stage, my lyrics, everything that I do, I represent Christ, I represent myself, and I represent beauty, and I represent black women that are bosses. No, Let girl, me land. Girl. Let me land No, no, point. no, no. We, you can't land no more. Well, that boss stuff, no a man does not want a woman who says she's a boss, sweetheart. Insecure men don't want a no, boss. No, no, no right. man. And oh, I'm telling you, men who've conquered the world again. do not <laughs> want this. But are they taking you home and saying, that's my wife? Somehow. That's a difference somehow though, that's no 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 you got a rebuttal to everything but you're not digesting you're hearing but not listening <laughs> you know why it's important for you to listen to you no not to me okay to, to wisdom so you talked about being a christian yeah. but it says the older women need to teach the younger women and younger women need to listen and be submissive but you know how many young women are not submissive to what men say but you say you're a christian woman okay you can't be a christian woman and buck against what men are saying that is anti-biblical is anti-god is anti-christ and it makes you the great whore of babylon that's Yikes. what the bible no, talks it. about Dang. i was raised in christian school christian college and i was in the church four days a week all day on sunday that doesn't mean anything no though. it means something when i'm telling you scripture and you're bucking against it okay. and it's against the word of god so don't claim god and christianity so but your god? attitude is bucking and you cannot be quiet for one moment what but, I I don't, don't ask god? me a question respond to what i said okay so what don't stories. ask me a question mm -hmm. you hear but you okay. do not listen if you okay. listen you would know the questions i ask the questions that you ask i don't really have much to say to them i'm gonna be honest but with don't you. claim christianity okay. if you're not willing to submit to when men are telling you. I can a lot of women are christian feminists I'm not a feminist. No, you came Christianity when it works in your favor, but you put down men and say, I'm, you're rebellious. Can I just you're ask, rebellious. when did I put down a man here? You're rebellious. <laughs> when did I put down you're a man? rebellious, and I'm calling it out. But you're I, rebellious. But when did I call you're a man rebellious. Out? I'm not. You're rebellious. I'm not, babe. Don't claim Christianity, Don't you're speak rebellious. That over me, no, that's not I'm me. speaking it over Don't you. Even you talking me. now, yeah. you have no discipline because you okay. can't sit and listen without opening your mouth. Because yeah, I don't feel like Because you're rebellious. No, I'm telling you, you are anti. Christ and you are the Jezebel. Whoever has influenced you has told you you need to be this Jezebel and anti and okay, rebellious. What we're not gonna do. Firstly, no, no, what, no, you're not gonna tell not nobody gonna what do. we're not gonna what do. Not gonna this do. isn't your show. Don't, don't tell nobody what we're not gonna show. do. Yeah, this don't tell me what I'm not gonna do. Though. No, but I will. You will not tell but me what I'm show? not gonna do. Don't tell me what I'm gonna do. No, is it yours? It's his. You guys, that clip, it just, it makes me mad every single time because she was not combative. She wasn't argumentative. She, she wasn't even disrespectful. You know, I could call a spade a spade, but it's like, she really didn't do anything. She just wore a blue rig, a, a blue wig. She was dark skinned and they wanted to use her as a, as the scapegoat on the podcast for entertainment, for views. And I hate that they did that to her. They basically ambushed her and kind of set her up. That's why when it comes to this space, you as a woman, as a black woman, like you can't just go to everyone's platform. I'm sorry. You just can't. Because sometimes their only goal is to use you for views, trigger you to get the views, and that's it. And that's it. And you're like this sacrificial lamb. That's why I felt so bad about this clip. So I just felt like she didn't deserve that. She just really didn't deserve that. When you think that you're a hypocrite, you think you're a hypocrite because just like my show, you call this young lady a whore for twerking this, this, and that. And then you That's also, hard. once again, always cast this net of judgment onto women, onto black women, calling them liars, saying that they set up men all the time. When you just told us that your ex-husband lied on you and set you up and went on this campaign to, you know, make you look a certain way, where was that energy for him? And do you think you're a hypocrite because you did not give him that same energy?
Okay, so I didn't call her that the, the great whore of Babylon, and I didn't say it about twerking. So if you're going to ask me something, you got to deal with facts. And so I did not say it was not in reference of twerking. And it was when I when I said what I said, I said it makes you like that when you have a rebellious spirit. Where in the Bible does it say that? Show me now. Show you now in the Bible. Like, what are you talking about? This is a the great whore of Babylon. She actually represents just like Jezebel, Delilah, and several women of the Bible who had a rebellious spirit. Do you have um, a scripture probably, that probably, reflects that she is the great woman. No, because I don't, I don't claim that she claimed Christianity on there. I you also claim to be a Christian woman. You're, you're a previous pastor. wife of a pastor you and you can't quote no scripture. You were married to the preacher and you can't quote no scripture. Make it make sense. Melanie, this is a quote I never claimed to be. Even on that thing, I said, I'm not, you I said, I, I was raised. Are you going to let me answer the question or not? You over talk me every time I say. You over talk everybody else, but go ahead. Go ahead, girl. I've said, since I know you don't watch my content many times, and even on that, I said, oh, I don't like you. Can I answer now? Or you of course, Melanie. You how much you don't like me? I mean, get it out. I only told you once. I think it's clear, but go ahead. All right, so back to the facts. So I never said those things. So again, if you're going to deal with something, come with the facts. So I said many times, and I said even on that, that I've never claimed that I'm some Christian. In fact, um, I've been hurt by the church. I was raised that way is what I tell people all the time. So I was raised in Christian school, Christian college, and I have been hurt by Christians the most. Um, and so I consider myself spiritual. I'm really not sure where I land right now in my spiritual journey, but I've never said that I'm some great Christian. I mean, I say it all the time. So if you know my content, I say I can I can kind of speak on those things because of how I was raised. But don't hold me to that. I say, listen, I'm grown. I'm more spiritual. I don't I don't get it. I, I'm not some great Christian woman. I've said this many times. I said that then. So, But not on that show, Melanie. Right. You told that woman that. Where have I been a woman of the call? Where's that? <laughs> I just, I just want to say this. Um, I can actually agree with her transparency about not having the best experiences with Christianity, the religion, right? Um, but that's not how she came across in this clip. And I think the missing key when it comes to Melanie is she's not transparent. You know, she comes from a place where it can't, just the way that she speaks to people, it's not that she speaks to people she speaks down to people. She doesn't speak at people. She speaks down to people. And so a lot of people take that as if, okay, she's coming across as if she's better than me. Some things she also says in a condescending tone or manner. And I can relate to that simply because I grew up around Christians who would do that to me as if, if I did something wrong or if I sinned or something like that, they would look, they would speak down to me. So maybe that's part of her upbringing. I can actually relate to that. But when you're on a platform like this, you have to learn how to speak to people, how to reason with people. And you can do that through transparency. So if she would have came like this on the podcast, I think people would have been uh, more open minded to what she had to say about her views and things like that. But she came across as if uh, she was self-righteous. She was holier than thou. I do want to make this clear on my platform as well, that she's not a Christian. She doesn't claim to be. And so we're not going to put this on Christians. So she claims to be spiritual. This is all on her. And I think that's important for me to say on a large platform because Christians, you guys do. Y'all get a lot of heat. Y'all y'all get a lot of heat. Y'all get a lot of heat. But a lot of us, please respect the fact that we have had negative experiences that are kind of similar to this clip that I just played as to why we may react sometimes to things that come from your religious group. Please do not take it personally. Okay. Um, but she has separated herself. So she's not a Christian and I'm just going to take that for what it is. Uh, she answered the question. That's how she responded. So I'm just going to separate them moving forward. You went, you said that you were in church. That doesn't mean I'm a woman of the cloth. No, you said. So you were so the first lady, first lady right? I was not the first lady. I was never other women accountable to standards that you don't even follow. That's the are you going to let me answer a question or you just want to just get out whatever you feel about me? It's either answer questions. What you're not going to do is come in here and gaslight. I asked you a question. We have had many times to answer it. I can ask you questions. That's what this is for. Answer if you're a hypocrite or not. What? 
You don't let me answer anything. And when you don't like my answer, you skip to the next part. You haven't answered the question. I'm answering. But the solution is you have to take answer. accountability. I don't care what your background is. There, We live in the most privileged society in the world. Even though the worst circumstance of a black woman today is nothing but it was 100 years ago. Especially if you want to talk about the U.S. slavery. I don't know how it was in the U.K. I mean, I do know. It wasn't like it was in the U.S. But if one woman, black woman, made a choice that was Maggie, made a choice that was better than the next black woman, then you have a standard now that you need to live up to. And I think a lot of times we wanted to say, well, it's somebody's fault to the government. It's this, that. A lot of races, you look at the Jewish people and what they've gone through in, in society, it's, it's a lot of the same atrocities. In fact, all of the Bible, all of the Israelites and the Hebrews were actual slaves. Thank you. Thank you. How you doing, panel? Melanie, what's up? Uh, Melanie, are you in fact a chameleon? Define what a chameleon is. It's a male lizard that changes colors. I am not that. All right, that's done. All right. Th thanks for being such a good sport and coming up here. I think it's the height of feminine behavior to grill a woman for seven hours straight. How long has it been? Four or five hours? So why do we feel this is something... When you say someone's grilling for seven hours straight, Here, are you talking about me? Because I've been going for three hours. Mm. Including the time you were on uh, the other channel, uh, Duke and Don? Okay, so if you came to Kate, for Melanie, like right now we're bringing people up who have questions for Melanie, not people who have comments for me. So if there's anybody that got questions for Melanie, that's why you're getting brought up. Because I'm not just going to be the only one to have the chance to speak to Melanie. Any of you are out there that's had questions about Melanie's comments, her behaviors, her disparaging remarks, especially black women, click the link and this is your chance to talk to her, just like Jessica D has been doing. I have one more question. If you are, in fact, not a chameleon, there is a video of you saying that you are a chameleon coming out of your mouth. So how do you define chameleon? Yeah, have you never had, you've never heard a joke before? Guys, I joke, I play around, I have fun. Y'all are so serious and militant about this stuff. Like, like, like I, I say that all the time as a joke. I'm a chameleon. I'm a 304. Like, like, like. I mean, but you're joking. Up, you're joking around serious shit, though, Melanie. Like, what are you talking about? On my channel, I say what I want. I, I'm not. I no, joke. we're talking about on other people's channel. Whose channel? Girl, yeah. you was on that white woman channel going in. Are you for that real? That white woman you was taping for, Curly Roll Records, your bestie. I was caping for. Girl, yeah, you said you love the woman. You said you it's love her. No, it was my first time meeting her. Oh, y'all, come on, stop the cap. Y'all are just doing this. Who okay, they love somebody the first time they meet them? That's a joke. You've never met a girl like, oh, girl, I love you. We besties. And just being good. Hell no. No. <laughs> I'm not you. I'm not you. I'm not you. You want me to be you? I'm not. No, I don't want you to be me. I want you to be real. Be real. You could never. Real. You don't get to judge if I'm real or not. But you're not. That's your opinion. No, boo boo. It's your page opinion. Your page no, shows that you're not real. I'm show that people don't believe that. Right. Well, oh, 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 I got to turn it out, guys. Like, 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 Work it out, work it out. Uh, yeah, work Melanie, it out. I have a question. What, what is your official uh, stance on Pearl as of now, after everything that's well, came out on her? What's, what's I, I not, I'll tell you, I do not associate with her. In fact, me and my sister who called, who called in, we, um, when I found out, I had, when I went there, I don't watch people in the space. I've, I've had to take a break from it. It's just a lot. It's intense. So uh, when I got the invitation and I knew some other people who were invited, I was just like, okay, that's cool. I actually brought my sister and my cousin with me um, because we were going to make it like a trip to London for us. So, and I was just like, okay, I'll go on the podcast. I don't watch Pearl. I don't watch the space. I, I mind my business. So, but I, I'd heard of her, I knew of things, but it, it hasn't been that serious for me. So she had been inviting me for a while. So I was like, okay, I know some other people going, I'll go. Um, I'm going to get some water in a second, guys. Um, so, <clears throat> so I went and, you know, I didn't know how people view her platform as, because I've seen videos when she's had white women on and other things, but I hadn't really looked at it like that. I just very cursory, cursory, I can't speak. Um, and so when I found out after we went there that she had spoken to this known racist and absolute deplorable racist, um, I was in shock. And I found out getting on the plane back, going back home. And I was so enraged because I couldn't believe she did not tell us or I didn't know or whatever. And I didn't, I, I was just in shock. So anyway, so I got back and I talked to her. And when I finally talked to her, I actually spoke to several people in the space. Um, I'm not going to say who, but people involved in the situation, other people that you know who I'm talking about, because I wanted to get advice on how to handle it. Every man in it, including yeah. my father, told me to stay out of it. And so um, I did. I spoke to her and I told her yeah. to her face and I told her, not to her face, but on the phone with my sister as a witness. I told her what she did was absolutely racist. I said, to have us also on there was disrespectful and not let us know that this is the type of thing that you had happen. And then we tried to school her, you know, because I always I like to have like there's a lot of people who think like her. And so, yes, there is a place to call out, call out those things. But I also believe in having a conversation because if we can actually have dialogue. So they, they had black slaves. Yeah, I've, I've heard that. Yeah. I'm like, no, they didn't. They didn't have it. But they weren't loyal to them just because they had the same skin color. Because yeah, we're not even 100 loyal to ourselves now. And like, look what they do to Candace Owens. Oh <laughs> and why do you think black people sold black people into the slave trade? They weren't thinking. They weren't thinking. Oh, oh, they're black. I shouldn't. They're thinking, yeah. Let me get this bag. Yeah. Like, I'm, not, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't clip me. Don't clip me. Yeah. So how did reparations work with the black slave owners? Were they all reparations or? Because it wasn't about race. They got, they got their slavery and they're like, oh, they got sorry, their freedom, not their slavery. They got their freedom and they're like, oh, I know how to run a plantation. Let me serve one. And then they went about oh, slaves, ran their own plantation, and then they're like, oh shit, you, you want to take this away? Oh no. Oh, and then they're, it just it was an institution. I said slavery wasn't like that. Some of them had like good relationships with their owners, and you looked at me like I was crazy. Yeah. You're in a position where they have this whole plantation. What do they do? They let them go free. What's going to happen? They're, they're not self-sufficient. Yeah.
Um, okay. <laughs> I don't know what that was. I don't know. Uh, oh, um, all right. So you did, you, so you confronted her on, yeah. the, on, on the yes. phone. Yes. Right. And documented and tried to have the conversation. And, and, and the reason why I just played those clips is because now Melanie got the PR trained answer. She's going to say when she found out she interviewed a racist, she disassociated. Well, now that you heard Pearl's own racist views out of her mouth, what do you have to say about that? We don't care about you thinking that the interview was in poor taste. What do you have to say about the disparaging things that have come out of Pearl's own mouth when she tries to rewrite our history? Talking about, oh, some slaves enjoyed it. I said slavery wasn't like that. Some of them had like good relationships with their owners. Also, why did you that like I have to be honest with you guys. I've never seen this clip. This is the first time that I'm seeing this clip. Well, the second time I'm seeing this clip um, because I did watch this live stream earlier. So I was shocked by this. I never knew this girl went on a platform and was saying this. And then there's a black woman sitting right next to her. Mm. Because yeah. in a position where they have this whole plantation. Um, what do they do? They let them go free. What's going to happen? They're, they're not self-sufficient. Yeah. What um, I, I mean, I, Jennifer, you just asked me a question and it keeps interrupting with a clip. So I had never seen that clip that you just showed just now. Um, so absolutely, Melanie, why it's, you horrible, it's horrible and it's very, it's very for people to vet men. Hold on, hold on, ladies, ladies, ladies. I know it's going to seem real contradictory that me of all people is going to say, don't interrupt her, but she's right. This is the first time that she's seen this information. I want to make sure she sees it all in length and then she can let us know how she honestly feels about it. Yeah. Like there, there's writings from. I can't remember. It's someone who's like the statue they want it taken down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you remember when they're tearing mm -hmm. all. So this guy, he and he wrote that he didn't like slavery, but he felt responsible to take care of the slave. Like he didn't mm -hmm. look at it as I own them. He yeah. looked at it as I, I inherited yeah. this. Yeah. Oh, there. England stopped slavery. Yes, y'all. Yes, this dumb <laughs> just said that England stopped slavery. Hold up. Stopped without England. They they police. Okay. They had no real real incentive to stop it mm -hmm. because um they really didn't have that many slaves. Gotcha. And um. I'm gonna run that back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, slavery wouldn't have been stopped without England. What do you have to say about that since this is your first time seeing oh, it? My sister's on here if you want to pull her up so she can confirm some things. So um, that's absolutely deplorable. I had no idea that she, like I said, I I did not, I, I don't, just like you guys have not watched all my videos and, and gone into everything I've ever said and done. I I, I did not know about that. So absolutely, that's absolutely a falsehood. That's a lie from the pit of hell that uh, is blatantly racist gaslighting. Um, and, and 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 she's wrong. I mean, and, and, and there's nothing else to say about it. It's absolutely, um, come on now. What? Well, I, Melanie, my question in reaction to that is, why didn't you vet her? You said that you didn't. You um, haven't vetted me. You, you said, said that I, you I, don't I, watch my channel. Watch every video of mine. I said that I do watch your channel. No, you said you have made a lot of friends. I know I don't like you. Those are my exact words. So my question, so don't twist my words. My question for you is, why did you not vet Pearl? You always advocate because I watch your channel for vetting people before you jump into things with them. Why You just said that you went. No, I don't have to. I really don't. You said that you went into her uh, podcast without um, watching her channel, didn't know too much about her. Why would you just blindly go onto a platform that could misrepresent you and your views and your ideologies without vetting it? Because once you go onto that stage, that's a cosign. I honestly think Melody didn't care. I think she had like a one track mind where she was more focused on growing her platform. She was more focused on getting her name out there that she just bypassed red flags, which women... We can relate to that, ladies, right? We can relate to that. We can relate to that when we have our rose-covered glasses on and we just were so infatuated with a guy that we just missed all the red flags or we're in denial about the red flags. And I think she had a similar issue with that. But see, this is why transparency is important because even me, as someone who talks about uh, discernment and all of that, when you get your emotions involved, your feelings involved, we women become delusional. We, me included, delusional. And you have to have the discipline to take a logical approach, detach, so that you can use your discernment. So your discernment is not blinded, okay? It's mind over heart. It's mind over feelings. It's mind over uh, emotions. And it, it just doesn't get any realer than that. Sometimes you have to slow down, right? You have to slow down and stop focusing and fantasizing on what could be the outcome. And I think that's what she was focusing on when she was working with Miss Pearly things. She was focused on the outcome, which was growing her platform, making a bigger name for herself, maybe even making some money and things like that. So I'm just here to bring some reason to the table when it comes to this conversation. Um, if she was to be a little more honest and transparent, I really think that that was what she was focused on. Okay. Which was growing her pockets. Okay. Aaron, you are up. You, I'm assuming are calling in to 
uh, answer the question about why men may be threatened by feminism, women having equality and rights. Go right ahead. Hi, good evening. Uh, good evening. Uh, I think that the issue is that a lot of men that are in this manosphere, red pill space, as I was before and as I've watched and developed the content, mm -hmm. we are disillusionized to what is actually going on. When you live on the internet and you keep mm -hmm. seeing clips of the extreme of one side, you start to believe that this is how everybody is. Mm -hmm. When in reality, life is a lot more nuanced and in the gray. So I don't think that if you're talking about the actual goal of uh, feminism, the mm -hmm. what Susan B. Anthony fought for and what came up through the 1900s and the 20s and the 50s, I don't think that's been achieved in the way that what you're talking about as, as the goal is to be. I think that movement has been hijacked by social media, by influencers. It has been highly promiscuized and sexualized, and the goalpost has been moved far away from what it should be. Aaron, we can agree on that. We can agree. Um, with me coming to this awareness, I had to separate myself. Um, I truly believe in feminism. When we focus on the meat and the potatoes of what feminism stood for, what it was created for, and we have really kind of uh, gotten away from that. You know, uh, the sexual liberation, it got out of hand, you know, and I just couldn't align myself completely with the feminist movement. So we can agree on that. Um, I think we need to get back to having integrity when it comes to feminism. I think we need to get back to what truly matters when it comes to fem feminism. So we can agree. Um, in modern times, it doesn't matter if you're a male or a female, doesn't matter what side you fall on. Being extreme and being a extremist is at an all time high. And I think we need to, found, we need to find our balance again because balance it brings on true understanding balance also brings on alignment which we are missing today which is why a lot of people are struggling with depression suicide um some some people are on antidepressants and things like that it seems like women are on antidepressants but then men are unaliving themselves so i think the extremists is being highlighted on social media, like you said, Aaron, and I think that is part of the issue. So we can agree on that for sure. Yeah, most definitely. I get where you're coming from. And it's the same thing when it comes to this manosphere, all of this stuff. I honestly can say that I watched it. I'm 25. I've been watching okay. it for about two to three years. And really, I realized that the issue necessarily wasn't what I was thinking. It was those that I was interacting with. And it was also some of my behaviors that would cause my issues. But when mm -hmm. you got people like MTR, Kevin Samuels, when you got people like Steph is cold, all of these different people in this space that are selling the product because these people mm -hmm. try to get you to buy courses and all of this other stuff, you slowly realize that it's just entertainment. It's like watching the Kardashians or Real Housewives of Atlanta or South Park. It's, it's a game and it's mm -hmm. to make money. The real life experience that you will get is by going through things, is by talking to your father, your mother, your grandparents, people that have actually been through it. Not listening to someone that's calling someone a whore for twerking, but then does it herself. I remember mm. watching that live and I was like, this is the straw that makes the camel's back. I can't take anything that these people or that Melody King says specifically out of her mouth to be truthful because mm -hmm. it is just all for sensationalism and for mm -hmm. people to really be continuously defending her. Cause I've seen things that she said, some mm -hmm. things I agree with, some things I don't agree with like everybody, but right. for people to continue to try to defend all of the hate and vitriol and the lying and the deflection as if she's some goddamn politician is just crazy to me. And it shows that YouTube is not a space to be taken seriously. No, quite frankly, you should get on here, look at stuff and then get off and continue about your day. Well, thank you, Aaron. Thank you for coming up here and sharing that. Uh, I do have one more question, though. When did you make the switch? Um, do you have any advice to young men that have kind of gotten caught up in that? Uh, in I mean, like I said, I've been watching this stuff for years. I've been preach. People that are in Manosphere that collaborate, you know, different mm -hmm. types of geopolitical streamers like Destiny. I've seen a whole bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. I think that, honestly, after seeing all of it from every which point away, I think the best bet for people to do is number one, if you got some type of issues, 
get a therapist. Number two, don't go to YouTube to get advice from people. Try mm. to get some lived experience from people that are around you. And if you ain't got that, then you got to go through the fire by yourself. You mm. cannot take what everybody else says as gospel. You know, you got to figure it out for you. And uh, I think really I found this stuff out and really realized this about a year ago. Okay. But, you know, it, I, I still like to consume some of the space. Some right. of it is, is, is helpful. Some of it is not so much. You know, you just got to mm-hmm. pick and choose your battles. Well, thank you, Erin. I tell the ladies the same thing that you're telling the men. So I really do appreciate that. Thank you for coming up here. No problem. You have a good one. Let's get back to this live stream for a sec. That's you giving a cosign. So where was the betting there? No, it's not. That's your opinion as a cosign, but it's not a cosign. If you appear know, it was it, so you're agreeing with what the guest is saying, that is a cosign. What? No, but it's not. You see it that way or not, that it's is not. a cosign. If you didn't no. agree with her ideologies, you shouldn't have been up on that stage, kiki and cackling and agreeing with everything that's that your she opinion. said. That's your opinion. Okay, but that's not mine. So you're gonna ask me a question, or are we here to ask yours? I just asked you a question. I said, no, why you're not? You, you just told me what, I, what my question answer should be. Was, you didn't answer the question. You told me what you wanted to say. That's why you didn't ask me a question. I'm not Duke. I'm not Anton. None of these people. Why did you not vet this white woman? What? Why didn't I vet this white woman? Are you hard of hearing, Granny? Why did you not vet just Pearly Roll Records? Okay, well, you're not going to call me out my name right now. I did. Okay, right. yeah, keep showing, keep showing up. It's gonna be great. I will. So, mm-hmm. so, so I mean, it's illogical. I mean, what you're saying is illogical. I mean, if, if every person with everything, I mean, you're on a white man's platform right now, YouTube. Have you vetted? No, no, no. Have you vetted YouTube? YouTube the owners, the owners YouTube of YouTube, YouTube is actually a very uh, vetted company. They're owned by Alphabet. The owners, they own, the owners, and I know owners. Of- the yeah. owners know everything about the owners. Stop deflecting, bitch. Oh, Answer her not, questions. Okay. okay. You did not gonna, you're not going to call me out my name. You're not going to call me out my name. So, have a good night. You're not going to keep calling me bitch and you're not going to call me I granny. If you want to have a respectful conversation, that's what we do. Yes, you did. You called me granny and he keeps calling me bitch. So, either you want to talk respectful and we're going to have a conversation or not. Oh, my God. You know, guys, I will actually concede and I will prove a point. Guys, wait, hold on. Everybody quiet. I will prove a point right now. I will prove a point that even with us, Restricting our language and no longer referring to her as a bitch. I get you. She still won't stay on topic. She's still going to gaslight. She's still going to deflect. But guys, watch. We're not going to call her a bitch no more. And let's see if now, since she knows she's not going to be called a bitch, if now she'll stay on topic. What was this again? Why didn't I vet her properly? I just, I didn't. I didn't know about it. I don't know. I, I have a life outside of YouTube. And and I, like, I went on the platform because I wanted to. I didn't know about it. End of the but Melanie, Melanie, but you went to London. Like, like the young lady just said, you literally tell your audience to vet people that they're wanting to date or wanting to be in their life so you mean to tell me you willingly took a ticket to london yeah. didn't give a fuck about what was going on you just gonna show up not knowing nothing about who you're talking to how this could affect you how this could affect your children how this could affect your reputation you just went because you wanted to it didn't really affect my reputation in fact most of the guys still rock with me and, and, and it, it, it affected okay. your reputation it absolutely affected your reputation Wait, i don't know my numbers no. went up people said they rock with me and the people who've been involved in it who were on on that those side. children don't count melanie you can't tell those children and also people children, what children? The importance of video. About my children, it's almost like you have not your thing. children, the children that you have subbed to you that you stole from your children's channel. Let's not play that. First of all, that's a lie, which I didn't, ma'am. My channel started from scratch from me. So if you're going to say something, have your facts. Just because you want to keep bringing up this document that somebody said something in a, in, in a divorce thing, I mean, let's use common sense here, people. I mean, really, but Melanie, that is common sense. No, Are you really? Not. No, it's not. I'm sorry, I'm not all knowing. I don't live on these YouTube streets 24 hours a day. I do have my children full time, which none of y'all believe. Where are your children? Where are your children? What you want to keep claiming? So you keep moving the goalposts. I say I have my children full time. Now it's moving to something. It's like I, I have a life. I have other things going on. I don't have time to sit and watch every single thing. And in fact, I, until all of this blew up with the Nick Fuentes, I hadn't heard that, like nobody was talking about any of this stuff from what I saw. If I had saw something online or it came across my timeline, of course I would know that. So was that a mistake in my betting? Absolutely. And I will own that. I don't have a problem saying I make a mistake. You guys think I have a need to be right? I do not. If I make mistakes, I re. I, 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 I recalibrate, I understand it, I try to do better. That's all I can do. It's like y'all want, y'all are like God and want me to, 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 to come to this, this conclusion or I'm some perfect being. It's like y'all see me as being more perfect than what I am. I'm just a human being. As and long, if I make mistakes- As long as accountability is being held, that's all that matters. If you're holding yourself accountable to it. Yeah, if you're, I have. If you're well, I did what I've done behind the scenes. If you knew, but I cannot speak on certain things. If you knew how pivotal I was in this, and, and I'm talking about the right side, the people who are mostly involved, and I'm not going to speak on it, they told me to stay out of it, this, that, and the other. So that's all I'm saying. So, so why did MTR come out and say she fucked up and said he told her, he told everyone on the live that he wasn't going to be fucking with her no more because he don't get down like that. So why would somebody tell you who literally is on the same trajectory as MTR to stay out of it? Okay. So the men in the space, the men who are very important in the space told me to, and my father did as well. So I, I that's what I chose to do. Um, and so, and if you see my, and people aren't even coming to me about the Pearl thing because it's turned into a thing where black people are now attacking each other and prove themselves to be more racist against each other than anything else. So this actually, what, what should have been staying focused on the thing, look at what's happened to black people now fighting each other. We wanna hold her accountable. I wanna see the videos of people talking about why are black people fighting each other? 
like this. Because there's such thing as house niggas and field niggas, and we all know that, Melanie. Well, that's not nothing new. Just because someone has a different opinion of yours doesn't give you, like, you want to talk about how come I said this about this woman, but you're calling your fellow black black people house niggas and all this other stuff. Because that's a true statement, yeah. Melanie. That's why we're divided. That's, that's why we're divided. And you're saying Melanie, that your fellow black woman is a whore of Babylon for twerking. Hypocrisy. Meanwhile, you up twerking in MTR's crib. That's the thing. We're talking about the, hip the hypocrisy, the hypocrisy in the manosphere. That's the What's biggest hypocrisy? problem. Why do y'all are so focused on hypocrisy? Y'all act like these are, all of us are these perfect beings that do everything right at all times. No one says that. No, you hold us to a standard. Nobody wants you to be perfect. We just we just want yeah, no, we don't. Why did you do, you do this this time and this time and this time and this time? And what about your doctors? Where are your kids? Where's your husband? Let's we read your entire you personal life be and read hours about you. It's 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 insane. I've never it's, seen it like that. Why are you talking about the biggest problem is it's like, with the hypocrisy? Look at Pearl. Look at her fucking friend Allie. Her little fucking shit. I mean, hell, uh, uh, Mike just did a little fucking a piece on her like uh, uh two days ago. And uh, about, uh, you, I'm pretty sure you know who Allie is, correct? Uh, uh Melanie. Uh, yeah, I've only seen one video first. I don't really watch her. Okay, know. if you don't, if you didn't know Allie, she's saying all this how to, how she got to her little high value man. Come to find out, she was actually fucking this dude while she was in another marriage. The voice, the fucking initially divorce from this guy, and I'm pretty sure she, yeah, she was what? fucking him while this motherfucker was in the in, in the marriage. She got divorced from the guy the same fucking year, married the fucking guy, what? two years. Seriously? Uh, yes, Mike. Uh, uh, -uh no, 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 no. Let's stay on Melanie. We're not talking about that lady. Let's 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 stay focused. Okay, that's a whole other thing. That's a whole other. Like I said, grifters. People. That's that. My whole point is in in the oh. manosphere. We want the grifters out. We want. All these people. I'm not in no the manosphere. I'm not in the manosphere, and I've said it since the beginning. I'm not in the manosphere. I just do me. I just do me. People put me there. I don't You're put doing manosphere content. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Y'all consider that. I am just doing no. me. Okay. So if you want to play, right. you can do it. I, I've never said I'm part of the manosphere. Those that's for men. I speak on the things that I want to speak on from my perspective. Whatever y'all want to label it as, then label it as that. Like, so why did you go to Kevin Samuels then? If he wasn't trying to be in the manosphere, why did you go to Kevin Samuel? Why did you need him to coach you? He's in the manosphere. I believed in what it had nothing to do with the manosphere, like this, 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 the manosphere and all this other BS. I don't. That's not. That's not what my thinking was. Like who wants to be in the like? Come on now. I said if you, you wouldn't let me finish it, I was talking about how Kevin, when I heard him speak and the things that he was saying, a lot of it did I always agree with his tone. Absolutely not. Do I think that's actually something him and I argued about? Um, you know, I said, you don't have to be that way. And, 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 and you don't have to do it in that way. Um, there's actually a guy, I think now that I, I, I recently met on the thing that I think he would actually be even better. He's he very, deals very well with women and talking to them. But anyway, so I found him because I, it was my personal growth journey. Right. So then when I was hearing that stuff. I said, well, I was like, I really rock with what he's saying. And I saw a lot of the women that were calling in, they were not, one of the things Kevin, I felt like he did is he pointed out problem, problem, problem. And he would say what needs to happen, but there was nothing to like later on. Like, um, no one can get in contact with him. And he's not answering. Let me. I'm gonna call his other phone. Hold on, guys. Oh yes, I was trying to reach the um the emergency room. Or just, uh, I'm trying to find out. A friend of mine was rushed to the hospital. I'm trying to find out what room he's in, or if he's there. Um, last name is Samuels. Okay, what what is this? I mean, we can't have a conversation without this goofiness popping in. Like, okay, like what was that? How did that add to the conversation? That was just more evidence that you're grifting right. and that you grifted off of the legacy of Kevin Samuels, and now you're claiming you're not manosphere. Okay. I don't know. I, like, I'm in the middle of talking. We can't have a straight conversation because this goofiness keeps popping up. Either we're gonna keep it a, keep it a buck or not. Is this just for y'all to like have entertainment or what? Are well, you like, gonna keep it a buck? Okay. I have to talk and it just keeps putting up something while I'm in the middle of talking. So it takes the conversation off topic, and I'm in the middle of saying something, and it that comes on, and it's like I guess it gives you a kiki and a ha ha. But let's be real. The people want to know if you're a grifter. Oh, something happened. I guess you didn't like that. Oh, she hung up. She she was tired. Well, we tired of her. That part. Oh, there she go. Melanie, are you a grifter? No, he cut me off. I didn't do that. So y'all were already about to spend a narrative about me. You call. know I was coming for you, girl. You I was coming. I, I literally was sitting here like, why did he cut me out? I was about to read a comment. Like, why he cut me off? It was technical like, difficulties. The stream refreshed. Right, but y'all were already running with a narrative, making assumptions. This is what keeps happening tonight. Even with that, he keep throwing up pictures of me when I was married. Like, what's the point of that? Like, y'all are just so obsessed with my personal life. It's bizarre. It's obsessive. It just like, doesn't make you seem yes, genuine, yeah, Melanie. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, then have a real conversation with me. You have won't have one with us. You go on a tangent. I'm talking. You keep popping up goofiness, kind of put up pictures of me, calling me bees and grannies and all this other BS. Either we're going to have a conversation and you want these answers, or you just want to just have kikis and laughs. Like, I'm up, here, I'm up here at 7 o'clock in the morning. I haven't slept. Trying to have a conversation with you guys, and I've got nothing but disrespect. I haven't been disrespectful. I've been asking questions. So you know, it's gotten so out of pocket. Like, I mean, I don't have time for this BS. Like, I'm over here. This adds nothing to my channel. I like I like my like my views and my things. Like, my audience they don't give a damn about this. All of them know about this. They don't care. Like, and I know it feels like a gotcha moment, but like, come on. Then why do you care? If your audience doesn't care, because why are you here? On my children and what you're not yes. going to do, speak on my children, lie about my children, where my children are. Y'all decided to bring my children into this and it's so nasty and so low down. 
So when your ex husband brought your children into it, it and he made it a public document no, no, that was read out loud. My divorce. How trifling do you have to be to go into a person's personal life and dig up? Real quick, just a moment, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I want to make sure that you guys know above all else, I keep that same energy. I would never call a woman a bitch without keeping that same smoke with a man. So, so Tommy, Tommy Sotomayor, Sotomayor, I see you, I see you backstage. backstage. I got no, I got no respect, respect for you. I've heard you're a black woman left. I get, I get yourself on the fans, fans, and kind of get yourself on your In my mind, you have to be a bitch. And we ain't going to get on the channel. Good day, good day. Backstage. What was that? He had to check a nigga real quick. I didn't let him talk. Well, he yeah, well, it's not my channel. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, like, I don't not... think that's very fair, but I guess, okay. But it's the same thing with I've decided to dig into my, my personal life because you don't like me. Hit me with the points you don't like, the things I say or do, and that's fine. If you yeah, so are you a grifter? But to dig into my personal life and to constantly be, a, it's an obsession. Like, y'all don't see this? Everyone else is saying how obsessed this is and weirdo. And talking about my children, I'm actually scared for my children's life. because We don't know. Like, you put your children on YouTube way right before Melanie King. But, but listen to this. I did not bring up. That's what I choose as a parent to do. And in fact, I started it because there were no black children on YouTube. The only representation were white kids and Asian kids. Well, you should have stayed focused on that, Melanie. That should have oh been Melanie God, to God. this. Day. If you're saying there are no black children on there, that's what you just say focused. You know, but you pivoted. What to do with my children in my life? That's you didn't even. You're not my mother. The court you're told you what to do with you your children, know. Melanie. I'm not telling you. The court told you. What did that have to do with anything? With anything that I'm doing? So you can't argue against the points that I'm saying. Dissect the video that I'm doing. So you bring up my personal life. You give up personal attacks because that's all you have. So you can dig and dig and dig into a person's personal life. It's weirdo. It's obsessed. I'm literally thinking about like I'm gonna have to protect my children. Put a restraining order because I don't know. You are inciting things where you're putting my personal information. Girl, that cray cray is coming out. You need to Bobby fall back, fall back, because ain't nobody coming after your kids. You're doing a lot right now. You reaching. You totally reaching. Are you you're obsessed back? with my children? No. You're obsessed with my children. No one they didn't come. Nobody they know your kids. kids. You're here. No We're talking about you. I my children every day. I don't have my kids. I'm this and that about my kids. All of this bringing up my doctors, my personal life. It's weirdo and obsessed. It's weirdo. It's big mad weirdo. Well, let's it's talk about weird. other stuff from the document because it wasn't just about your kids. Let's segue to the other stuff in the document. Again, when you don't like what I'm saying, you move the goalposts instead of responding. Nobody's to moving it. You don't want nobody to talk about your kids. So no, therefore, you, as another parent, I'm respecting that. Let's move away no, from your not, children no, and go somewhere not, else. Because you keep bringing it up. You talking about restraining orders and stuff. No, yes, because y'all are weird and you're. You're weird. You're weird as fuck. You do weird shit. You go on white supremacist channels and talk bad shit about black people. Okay, okay. I want you to go through all my videos and you come back with that. It gives you no right to dig into my personal life, but that's all you have. So keep digging. I don't give. I don't care. You yes, you do. I, okay, let's bring up all the live streams where y'all are so excited about my personal life. You're obsessed with me. Obsessed with what I look like. Obsessed about my body, what I've done. My so body. are you. That's why you cut it up. You were obsessed with what you look like, so you cut it up and made yourself into something new. You are obsessed with what I look like. You're not even on camera, sis. Pull up. Boo, I'm right here. Why are you making it like you're deflecting once again? Stay on topic. I look like. Stay on topic. Why are you? Why are you on topic? You with? I know Melanie ain't talking about coming on camera when you came on camera with a manufactured fucking face, Melanie. You got all that work done, and you want to act like you a bad bitch. Want to talk about someone's looks? Why don't you show us what you look naturally? Oh, wait, it's on the screen. Big difference, huh? My real face that I was going with. I'm pulled up. Congratulations. You asked. Here I am. You so want a you middle? Middle? Rifter? Yes or no? What are we talking about? You want to talk about my kids, my divorce, I, I, my I, channel, I, uh, the Pearl, I, uh, my, my face? What, who do you want to talk about? You move the goalposts and you don't like what I have to say. Answer, that's just and you did it to my personal life, which is weirdo. You're weirdo. Lady, worry about your kids. Worry about your kids. Worry about your kids. Worry about your kids. Don't bring my kids in your mouth again. Period. Or you're going to find out about me. Period. Melanie, so weird. Melanie, Period. Ain't, ain't nobody taking your insult seriously. Nope. Come on, okay. come on, girl. Ain't nobody taking it serious. I, I, I'm glad you're not. Be unprepared. I'm glad you don't take me serious. I want you to. Don't take me serious. But don't bring up my kids again. And you're digging in my personal life like weirdos. Every time I say something, you move the goalpost to something else, something else, something else. You don't like what's it because I'm not supporting your narrative. You think you're going to get these gotchas out of me? Come on now, grow up. Melanie, is it, is it, is it a weirdo? We're stopping this for hours. Y'all, something's wrong. Something's wrong. Melanie, is it weird to call hospitals asking about a man that you really don't know and you didn't even go to the funeral? Is that weirdo? You know, you know my personal life with Kevin Samuels. I'm sorry. That's Girl, you put it on live. I said I don't know my she forgot. What are you talking about? I didn't know him. First of all, backtrack. You said I decided. Were you at the funeral? No, 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 no. See, you're moving the goalposts. Let's stick with what you just said. Um, no one can get in contact with him. And he's not answering. Let me. I'm gonna call his other phone. Hold on, guys. Oh yes, I was trying to reach the um the emergency room. Or just, uh, I'm trying to find out. A friend of mine was rushed to the hospital. I was trying to find out what room he's in. Anything he's else there. you want to address with people? Okay. Um, last name is Samuels. Um, I, I, you know, I just want to say this. Um, when it comes to this Kevin Samuels thing, I thought her live streaming that was truly in poor taste. 
It was. And this is coming from a woman that really didn't care for Kevin Samuels. I didn't care for Kevin Samuels because he used the same method. Shame, blame, and explain to women through verbal abuse to take accountability, which was unsuccessful. Um, this is coming from a woman who really didn't care about him like that. So I don't know. Uh, were there women on? Were there what? Were, were there people online celebrating his death? Yes, and I actually, with me having this stance, made a live stream that was very unpopular by my audience to not celebrate this man's death. But I thought it was even more strange for her to live stream her calling around to different hospitals and things like that. It was really weird. It was. It was just very strange to me. Um, I don't even know why she thought that that would be okay. It was very invasive. Um, it was definitely giving, oh, I'm doing it for the money because it's like, why would you, why would you do that? Why would you do that? So, um, and I got a lot of pushback for, for telling my audience not to celebrate the death of a man because, uh, you, you just don't want to call on certain spirits when you do that. I'm a very spiritual person. So I just don't participate in that type of stuff, but there were, there were people out here celebrating it. Um, and she was out here creating a live stream, trying to figure out where he was at. And it's sad that that man was in a freezer and he was toe tagged with toe tagged with no name. And that's why when she was calling around, no one knew who she was talking about. So it's really unfortunate, but Hey, it is what it is. I don't even know why she thought that that would be okay. It was just extremely inappropriate to me. So it's just, I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> think, the fact that y'all think it's funny, a person dies and people are celebrating his death online. And this is a good friend of mine. You're just making things up. How, no how low you are. You are. You're bringing up a Work moment out. of vulnerability. And this, this is some dunk. I don't Work care. Out. It's up there. And I'm not ashamed of what I did. If you don't like it, that's your opinion. You didn't know, Kevin. But you, you just said that we was digging in people's personal shit. And it's weird that a woman is calling a hospital and she ain't even at the funeral. It's a weird ass thing. Then you, then you let it ride. That's your opinion. That's how you roll. I'm not you. And I'm not going to operate the way you do. I do what suits me, what I feel like doing. I'm grown. Like, y'all want to call me? I'm granny. I'm old and all this. Yeah, so this granny right here is going to do what she wants to do to find out what's happening to her friend. If that's not what you want to do, that's you. I'm not you. But you didn't show up to your friend's funeral. And I've already addressed that. Why are you worried about if I went to my friend's funeral? Did you know him? Why do you care who went to his funeral? Because you called us weirdos. Why Don't you like her talking weird ass shit? You talking weird. You're deflecting. This funeral I go to. Why are you obsessed about my every move, my personal? Because life? you chose to click. You chose to click record on the camera, and then you you let everybody know you calling to figure out where this man at, and you ain't even at the funeral. So what? It's none of your business. You didn't have that smoke for MTR. MTR asked you the same thing. You went to crying and then said you had to twerk it out. Come on, sis. So, so then you have your answer, and you're just asking me again when you have your answer. So you clearly heard my answer before, but then you're gonna allow Camille knows and unspoken vibes and Kev to hop in. I gotta get some water. Sure. Okay. All right, I'll wait till she comes back to uh I was very exhausted. I'm like, how do y'all be doing that every day? That's crazy. People had to grow their YouTube channels and stuff, and I would probably have never made a video about her because there's nothing hypocritical about that. <laughs> but you know, when she's giving out dating advice and dogging women and her, if you're saying that, that she Listen. had no idea and da -da 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 -da, yeah. Part of being an adult is that you have to own the decisions that you make and the consequences and repercussions from the things that you choose to do. Mm -hmm. I feel you. I feel you. Well, hey, um, before we wrap up the stream, um, you got anything else to say? Hey, honestly, um, um, I, I would love for you to click the link and join the panel sometime. Um, another day, we have a lot of stream about, you know, uh, Black history, culture. Right now, there's a big rift between, you know, um, African immigrants. Hey, everything blanked out for a second. So I, I'm sorry, I missed part of what you were saying because it. Oh no, it was that's buffering. fine. Uh, are you able to hear me now? Yeah. Okay, yeah, all I was saying is I hope you actually join my show again on some of my other panels I do. I do some panels about like race oh, and culture yeah. and mm -hmm. issues within the diaspora. For example, there's a lot of um, Africans, immigrants in the UK that really hate us black Americans. And, you know, we, we have a pretty tense relationship with them. So there's a lot of more, you know, intellectual discussions that I have on the show that I feel oh, you would so you be mean, a great candidate for. Oh, so you mean the whole of all of your content? Oh, no, 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 come on, come on. No, no, no. It, it's just, unfortunately, it's, it's what gets the most clicks. <laughs> That was a, it's a, to me, just observing the type of energetic space. I'm also a Reiki master. I mean, it's a holistic healing. You know, oh, sure. so I might have to hit you up about the numbers. Shoot, that's, that's you might have to get my birthday so, and my, so, my birth time. So uh, no, I, I don't do tarot. But, oh, okay, okay. You know, if you want to talk about you know wellness and stuff like that, that's a different thing. But that's why I can stay even keel, even in being in the hot, you know, in the flames. But no, because it takes a lot of energy to be in this space of you know. So I hope you're doing some self care because this is a lot to 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 be on. Uh, not to say on edge, but you know, to it's be a negative energy to balance. Exactly, yeah. exactly. You know, and again, I appreciate everybody's comment to give perspective to her. You know, I, I, I apparently, you know, apparently she was on the whole, you know, for all this, all that time, listening to everybody's opinion. Again, I will be having a um, conversation, you know, with her about it and, and other things. I'm sure uh, as a family, I know my dad will have something to say. Um, that you know, we'll we'll talk about it because you know, um, we all want her to succeed. I, I don't think that uh, I don't think that things are irreparable. 
um, with Mel. You know, I think that, um, I think her experience, like if, if she just decided one day to up and quit YouTube or whatever, um, I'm not saying she's going to do that. I'm just saying like, if one day that doesn't happen, you know, she has an expertise that can help other people learn how to scale up their channel. You know what I mean? How to be, you know, how to be big. She could be a consultant, you know, for businesses and other people. How do you scale up? So, you know, even controversy can be, you know, there could be positives in controversy. Yeah, I feel you. And, and I agree. And, um, and and also, I mean, if that was her content, if she was teaching people how to grow their YouTube channels and stuff, then I would probably have never made a video about her because there's nothing hypocritical about that. <laughs> but, you know, when she's giving out dating advice and dogging women and her own home. So, so with the dating advice, though, what I, what, what, it, what, uh, what's interesting about that is that there are people who find value and it apparently works for them. You know, it's not she, she does not have authority over, you know, the world to be like, you do this and, you know, this will work. Yeah, yeah. But there are people who do, find, you know, everybody receives information in a different way. Mm -hmm. So there are people who find value in what she says. It works for them. And that's why, you know, they're, they, you know, book these, uh, you know, consulting sessions. It's the same thing. Like, like I say, in real life, I worked with a white, uh, you can look him up, David Nagel, who's on a wealth. He is in that wealth space on a um, a Tony, uh, kind of like a Tony Robbins kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And he contracted my company to produce seven of his actual in-person conferences to to talk about like how do you scale money and like literally I'm sitting in there you know producing these shows and I'm like this dude is not telling them anything <laughs> that I couldn't say and they have paid this man between ten thousand and one hundred thousand dollars to like in real life like you can go to his website now they pay between ten thousand and a hundred thousand to hear this man say anything that a regular black person could have told them so people is perceived value people go to where they can receive information the best like the same like a church every pastor you can't get the word you know from every single person the same way you know this some people got to speak in a certain type of type of way same yeah, thing like the teachers you perform better in certain classes because some teachers were able to give you the information in a different way that you could receive it so you know if anything like these people who do support these people in this space like they have people who find value you don't have to agree mm -hmm. you know what i mean but there are people it's not like so that's where like the, to me the scamming part um comes in because there are people who find value in it basically you what you're saying is fair exchange is no robbery Exactly. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah, totally. I understand. And everybody's going to vibe with who they vibe with and rock with who they rock with. Yeah, no, I get you on that. Totally understand. Well, hey, like I said, hopefully uh, we have you join the panel again when we're doing well, more I, of I our intellectual you being discussions. I appreciate you respectful towards me. You know, because yeah. again, I haven't come at you in any type of, uh, you know, way. But again, you know, anytime somebody, people are sliding my DMs, dropping me the links to your show, I'm absolutely going to, you know, come in and, and, and you know, uh, try to support my sister. Mm -hmm. I feel it. And you're a stand up sister. Shoot, I wish my sister acted like you, goddamn. <laughs> Listen, I'm one, of the most, one thing, I'm one of the most solid people you will ever meet in your life. I believe it. Well, until next time. And actually, watch, I'm going to even get you. Um, it means bringer of laughter in Swahili. Oh, okay, okay. I can dig it. Shakesha. Well, thank you for joining once again. I hope you have a great day. Get yourself some sleep at some point <laughs> till we meet again. All right, thanks. Peace out. All right, ladies and gentlemen. And then there was one. So I got to go to the gym. I got to do a little bit of self-care. You know how it is. Um, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'll be doing a monetization party stream sometime this afternoon. I'll also be streaming the receipts on myself sometime this afternoon. So just stay stay tuned, guys. Um, don't only subscribe, but hit the bell notification and select all. That way, YouTube actually sends you a push notification whenever I'm live. But God damn it, y'all, I'm undefeated in these YouTube streets. I didn't got real fam sapien coming on my channel. Just pearly things coming on my channel. Melanie King coming on my channel. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I got them real pressed about something. And when... <laughs> Okay, shout out to Mike TV. Shout out to Mike TV. Shout out to Mike TV. Okay. Um, I'm I'm logging out. Um listen, if we want to do a debate, I would like to actually schedule a debate because I feel like people should prepare when you debate before you debate. But debates are supposed to be organized. That's what I'm 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 not understanding that. Debates are supposed to be organized and they are supposed to you're supposed to stay on topic. Also, shout out to my mods. Shout out to Empress. Is she still here? Is she still in the chat? Thank you, sis, so much for uh emailing me all of these different statistics and things like that because it was so hard trying to reach research that. Is she still here? Oh. Thank you, sis. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have been a great help tonight. Thank you. I appreciate um, you being here for the live. And to anyone else, all of my mods, thank you. I really do appreciate you. You ladies, enjoy the rest of your night. Also, the gentlemen that tuned in, I hope you enjoy the rest of your night. And I will catch you in my next one. Bye.